Thanks. Yes. Do you need to use the bathroom or anything? Are you good? I know you might come over and ask you if you want a water or anything. Yes. I guess it's going to keep checking on you and make sure. Um, you said you wanted to see Galan? Yes. What's that in reference to? My daughter. Just what she's, how she's doing. Okay. So you just want to inquire? Uh, she was working on the temporary custody. How's that going to work now? Well, obviously now it doesn't, but... Did you pay him already? Did you already have to? No. No? Okay. All right. I mean, she's safe. Right. Then, you know what I mean? That's that's, that's key. That's the most important thing. Um, and Steve, I'm just... I, I know you're tired, and I'm tired too. And I told you I tried to be able to paint this picture of you and to keep you out because now she's without both her mom and her dad you know and if things happen the way you said it happened which I told you I and I, I understood everything you were saying yesterday it took a long time to get it out of you and to try to understand but if things happen the way you said it did then there's there's really no reason why you shouldn't just take us to her you know what I'm saying? That way we can prove, okay, or if there's no other injuries or anything on her, we can say, okay, well, it must have happened the way he said it did. And he just did a bonehead move and freaking brought her out here instead of calling 911 or taking her to a hospital. That's a misdemeanor compared to a, a freaking homicide charge. You know what I mean? Yes. So if things happened the way you said it did, I don't see why, I don't see why you're just not taking her to us. Taking us to her. You know what I mean? That's the, it just that just completely throws me off. You know, you you've gotta remember where you put her. That's just that's not something like I said, you don't you didn't seem like that kind of person. It's like, is this the first time you've done this? If you get abused, straight up cannot remember where you where you put Trisha's body? Where you put a human body and they're dead? You is this the first time you've done this? How often do you do this where you don't remember a, a specific location? That's the point. I've never done this. Okay. Why would I remember? I don't. So that's done that's this. a day that you will remember for the rest of your life. I'm sure. That's a day you will forever remember. Yeah, a lot of it was, you know, panicking. You were freaking out, like you said. You, know, you couldn't reiterate it any more than you already have. You kept saying you were freaking out, There's, but there's no reason why. If, if that's how it happened, there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to take, take me to it. I don't know where that is. I can't take you. I don't know where. Okay. Well, I'm sorry. Is she in Martin County? I have no idea. I don't know where it is. But, but do you... See when you do you drive me crazy. When you do that and you get you get the real low and you just you close your eyes and it's, it's the same thing you did to me yesterday. You have to close your eyes and I don't know what it, you know where she's at. Just like remember when I kept telling you, why at one twenty why at one twenty were you in the car and you just I don't have an answer for you. You did the exact same thing. It's the I'm scared and I'm afraid to tell you where she is. I'm scared, I'm afraid to tell you what really happened. But if things happen the way you said it did, there's no reason. No reason why we shouldn't just go get her. If just me and you go, just me and you go, I'll, I'll take you right now. Just me and you. You take me to her? I can't take you to a place I don't know. That's the problem. I don't know where that place is. I can't point to it on a map because I don't know where it is. I'm not asking you to point to it on a map. I can't take you to it because I don't know where it is. I don't have a clue where that you is. You have to have some kind of clue. I cannot believe that. Do you think that a jury is going to believe that? That I you have no idea where you to, took? But that's the what, problem. What, if what, I could tell wouldn't you, you want them to? Wouldn't you, don't you want closure on this? Don't could, you want closure? If I could closure? tell you, I would tell you. If I could show you, I would show you. But I, I don't know where that is. 
driving around today. None of that looked okay. in any way familiar. Is it, is it because that there wouldn't be anything of her left? There should be. I remember I just I just laid her down and I crossed her hands and I left her things with her, her phone and her, her wallet. And then I just I just sat and I just I just left. Because I was hoping that I was wrong and that like she was gonna be okay and that it was just I don't know, that it was just like a spell or something. I don't know what I look, I wanna believe you. I I really, I really do. I wanna believe you. And you know, I know you've you've said this over and over again, but just you know what, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you you've got the stage here. You mm -hmm. tell me you tell me from soup to nuts, I wanna know everything that happened. And if there's something you left out before, there's something you left out before, now's the time to bring it. Now's the time to bring it. See, even look, from the beginning, look, let's you start with okay. where she is. I couldn't tell you then because even then okay. I didn't know where that then was. Then let's start. Then do me a favor. Then start with me. Twelve oh eight. I know you. You called her. You texted her. She comes over. You tell me from there what happened. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna stop you. I'm not gonna. Nothing. You tell me what happened from there. I'm not gonna put any words in your mouth. No, Why does it not matter? Of course it matters. there's nothing I can say to show or prove anything unless I can produce a body, which I can't produce this body because I don't know where the body is. I can't, I can't do anything. I can't convince you one way or the well, other. It no. does matter. I want you to tell me from soup to nuts, starting from midnight when she came over, around midnight when she came over, you tell me in your words what happened. You go from there and tell me what happened. I want to believe you. I want to be able to to lay it all out there for all the investigators, for all the everyone that's gonna be looking at this and be able to say this is what happened, this is his version. I'm not putting any words in your mouth. This is all coming from you. Okay? So you tell me what happened. She gets there. She gets there because you call her. Yes. Okay. What happens from there? She tends to faith. She tends to faith. Okay. Yes. Same stuff I've already told you. Go ahead, tell me again. She tends to faith. They're doing your paperwork. We're going to be sitting here, so you might as well talk to me. Right? It doesn't matter. It does matter. It doesn't matter, Jess. I can't produce a body, and therefore I can't, produce, I can't prove anything I'm telling you. And so Why it can't matter. you produce a body? Because I don't know where it is. I can't produce something. I don't have magic. I can't poof out of thin air. I don't know where that place mm -hmm. was. You're telling me that you don't know where this place was, that you were just freaking out, but you were smart enough to think about packing extra clothes and taking it with you. I didn't pack extra clothes. That bag was already packed with just clothes. I never unpacked okay. it. Okay, but you were, you just had it enough, you were together enough, to you had it together enough to say, I'm going to bring extra clothes with me, because you didn't have those clothes in her car, did you? No. Is there any reason why she had your rucksack, I don't know how, how you explained it yesterday, how she had extra clothes, your extra clothes in her car? That was my bag. I brought that bag. I brought that bag from North Carolina. It was okay. already packed with clothes. Okay. So you brought it from the house, but you put it in Trisha's car. I grabbed it because I threw water in it. It was just a bag. I threw water and something to eat. And I was mm -hmm. like, if she comes to, maybe she'll be thirsty. Maybe she needs food. I just threw it in the bag. I didn't even unpack it. I just grabbed it. Okay. It was a bag. Okay. And you brought... What else? I just grabbed a bag. It's like, I would a bag. feel, I would feel so much better. I, honestly, I would feel so much better. You tell me, and you know that you try to give her a proper burial. You know that it, that you didn't just leave her out there. I can't bury her. I don't have a shovel. I didn't have anything to do any of that with. You didn't bring a small shovel with you. No, I don't even own one of those. I've never owned one of those. Okay. So I can't. That's what I'm saying. Like, I thought by now she would have already been found. And so the fact that all this time has passed and she hasn't, even I'm confused because I'm like, I didn't. There's you no have to know. I just, you I have just, to know, like, in a, at least an approximate area where you took her. I don't know where that area even is. I don't have a clue where that is. But it's you just, made it there. You made it back. You were thinking straight enough to change your clothes or to. Got rid of the clothes I already had. Anyway. Exactly. So you were because you were thinking straight enough, to do with that and night. then I wouldn't want anything else to do with her and the You crazy. were thinking straight enough to go back and clean up, 
You are thinking straight enough to send that BS text the next morning just to cover your steps. It's the next morning. I, I know, but you told me, night. you had already told me you hadn't slept all night. Just lay there. The only reason you would not take us to a body is because she didn't die the way you're explaining. But she did, and I can't tell you where that is, and I don't know where that is. I don't have any recollection of where that place is located. You remember making a right on Bridge Road. That's it. It just didn't even then. It's what? just a dark road. It's all I remember. We're just, we're just driving. Just a long dark road. Just dark and straight. But it took you out at night. Did that help jog your memory? Probably not because it's dark out there. Everything, exactly. even during the day, it just looks like trees and grass and trees and grass. And if we do it at night, it's just going to look the same, I'm sure. Just trees and grass. I don't know where the place is. I have no idea where it is. You I don't have know. to have some recollection of where it is. And if I could, I would bring it. You can. And then you could see that. You can. Everything I'm telling you is what I'm telling you. Stephen, you can. The only reason you're not is because she didn't die the way you're saying. She did. And that's why I freaked out so much. Because she did. Everything like that happened. And I freaked out because. I'm trying to figure out why this is even happening. I've been good to her. I've been nice to her. I've given her space. I've let her say whatever she wants to say. Do you, you know, think she did this on purpose? I figured like it was a setup of some sort because she's set me up before in the past. And I'm thinking like, okay, so this is like some ultimate thing game kind of thing. I don't even know what you're trying to do at this point, And I don't know why you're trying to do it at this point. But once again, I can't. I can't pinpoint where she is in life at the time because she just goes from one side okay. to the other. Okay, well you're, you're talking about, about where she is at this point. I Are you talking about where she where she was mentally at the point? Yes, I mean, like, do I mentally and emotionally. I don't know. I just She just tells me one thing and I just take it for a grain of salt because I don't believe it. I think she's just playing games. That's how I've always viewed her, just playing games. I just don't really pay attention to most of it. I feel like it's just, I don't know, she's just filling blank space. She's just talking to talk. I, I don't know what to say. There's, there's so much more to it. You're just not, you're really just not, uh, we show that to a jury. There's, there there's no way for me to help you paint that picture you're not finishing it you're not finishing it I can't tell them that I can't tell them that and without having her to prove your to prove your defense Sure, you didn't put her in the water because she loved the water. Did she you kind of want to leave her on the beach? Yeah, that's her like, doesn't, doesn't really beach. That's but you didn't go left, you said you went right. I went right just because it was just long and dark, and I just drove and I just space out and drove. I just, just trying to put pieces together and figure out what happened and why it happened. And what she was trying to do and why she was trying to do it. And if there was something she had said the day before that I just didn't pay attention to, and that's why this is happening, or if in our text messages in the past, or if our conversations in the past, or I don't even know, just trying to figure out what in the world this was for. Like, what was the point? Because it doesn't make sense to me that you would do this now. But it didn't even make sense to me way back then that she would even do it. So now it still doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. There's not really not going to be much of her left at this point. 
I mean, honestly, you're trying to be like, you know, you're trying to be this good dad and you were trying to, you know, keep your shit together and, and you've got Laura, you were trying to do all this, keep everything together. And this goes and happens and it's like, how do you I mean, honestly, do you even care? How are you going to explain that to her? How are you going to explain that to her? Do you expect her to believe that? When she gets older, do you expect your daughter to believe? I have no idea how I'll ever explain any of that to her. I can't even explain it to you, um, much less her. But how are you going to look your child in the eye later on, when she's older, when she's asking you, where did you put my mother? Wow, so you literally, here's what you've done, is like you've literally tossed the future that you could possibly have with your child. You have tossed that completely away. Something as simply as taking us to where she's at, so we can prove your, prove your statements. I get how simple you're saying it is. The problem is, I don't know where that is. Why don't you know where because that is? Because I don't remember where that was. I don't. No. I don't know what the road was. I don't know where the road was. I don't know any of that. It's just a really dark night. It was just dark. Mm -hmm. There were no signs. I didn't see any signs. I just drove, and then it was a dusty road, and then it was just dark, and I'm just sitting there. Because I don't know where the hell I am. I don't know why I'm even still out here, and I'm just sitting there now. Now what do I do? You call the police now? That looks great. You drove your ex-wife out to the God knows where the hell you even are. You don't have your phone to call anyway. So now, what do you, like, what do, you do now? What do you? And every every. Do you remember day street back. signs? Do you see? Do you remember? No, I don't remember street, any street signs. I don't remember anything as far as location. I just know it was a dirt road, a stupid dirt road, and it was stupid dark. I okay, so let's explain to me. So you make this right on Bridge Road. How long do you drive out? Approximately. No, I didn't. I didn't have a clock or a phone or. Like, I don't even have a watch on. I don't even know. It just spaced in my mind and just tried to make sense of stuff. And I just drove. And I didn't even know how fast I was. I just drove. I just drove. I just did you stay on that road drove. or did you make a right or left and go down the other roads? I don't know what roads. I just know that it was a dirt road when I laid her down. It was just I'm dusty and I'm dirt. I'm sorry, Stephen. I, 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 I do not believe that. I do not believe that. I do not believe that. That's the explanation that I have to give to her family and to the jury. He doesn't know. He must do this all the time, but he just is confused as to where he actually took her as opposed to anybody else. All the time? That's what I'm saying. It, if I did it all the time, it'd be easy to remember. I do my job all the time. It's easy. I can do it without my eyes closed half the time. I do it all the time. It's something I do. It's repetitive. I know. I've never done this. I've never dealt with any it's of this It's only been a month. That's a long time for something I haven't done before. I can't... If I took a new person to an aircraft and showed them one task and then waited a month and, hey, do that task again, they're not going to remember any of that. I know I need a screwdriver. Good job. You need a whole lot more than that. It was a month ago now, and I don't remember any of where that is. It was... I don't remember any of that location. Did you bury her? I can't bury her. I don't have any means to bury her. I had no way to do anything with her. It just... So I just laid her down. You had gasoline? There was no gas. You had a lighter. Yeah, there, there was, was gas. There was no gas in that thing. It was like nothing. I put that gas in the car for her. Stupid gas can anyway, just put it in this stupid car. That's not big. I'm not sure I'm buying any of that. You have to know a, an approximate area. You need a whole lot more than that measly amount of gas to burn somebody. I imagine you need a, a crap ton more gas. Even a jet doesn't burn fuel that fast. It just doesn't. And it's jet fuel. I imagine gasoline doesn't burn nearly that fast. I don't know where she is. What was she wearing? She still had her dress on. She had that bluish black dress. Mm. 
She had flip flops. And what did you leave with her? Her phone. for some a bride or I don't know this ID for herself I don't know it just it just made sense at the time Steven. I just so I just left it Stephen was she there before you left to get her laptop like you said no she <laughs> yeah when I left to get that mm -hmm. they were still sitting there with her watching her show and that's why I was like it's stupid to get your laptop now and you just trying to get her to go to sleep you just do it later and to her it was really important that she had it. Okay. Which laptop did she want? She said her work laptop. She said work. She had work to do. And I'm like... Why did you leave that out? The work laptop? Why did you not tell... I can think of five previous interviews that you did. Because it was the law important. important. It's, it's important. very important. When you clearly said that, you know, you guys were in the house and yes. you just went to get gas. But that's pretty important. You forgot to mention that you took her car and went to go get her laptop. And it didn't make sense when I went, and I was glad I didn't go because it would have been even more awkward showing up to mm -hmm. ask for a laptop. And so I just I came back, and then I realized, yeah, your car is pretty much on like done. Like there's mu mu almost nothing in this car. Mm -hmm. And then that's when she was like, yeah, I'm gonna take gas in the morning. And I'm thinking, of course she did. So that's when we discussed the whole getting gas, looking for a gas can, and that's when I got the gas for her. And at that point, when I came back. That's when I saw her, and I'm thinking, well, Why did she have you go get gas for her if she was going to go home? She was going to pass a gas station on her way. I don't, I didn't question. It just made sense to me. It just, mm -hmm. I don't, I didn't. You know what made sense to me, though, too? Remember when I talked to you about the cell phone? You told me yesterday that the cell phone, that she had it on her, and it was, the cell phone was dead. Remember you telling me that yesterday? No, it wasn't dead. She had her phone. Yesterday, you told me her phone went dead while she was in the house. It wasn't dead. The phone was not dead. I don't remember her phone being dead at all. Because she had it earlier that night when she was taking Faith's heart rate. She was measuring right. it with her phone to take the time. Well, when we went to do the video walkthrough now, you told me her phone was in her car. I remember seeing it in her front seat, yes. Okay, so what, which one was it? Did she have it with her or was it in the front seat? I remember seeing it in her front seat. It was mm -hmm. sitting over there by her purse. Okay. And tell me this. I'm asking you this. Do you shut that phone off or do something to that phone when you took it out the first time? When you took the car out the first time? No, I didn't take her phone. I didn't care about her phone. Phone, tower records, and you know, there's no lying about that. Her phone. You want her phone? Her phone. I, okay, maybe you didn't want it. But I'm telling you, her phone went off around the same time you took the car out the first time. That's not me then. I don't care about, I don't need And you're phone. telling me that her phone was in the car in her purse. It wasn't in her purse. It was, there's a purse and her phone is like next to the thing. Okay, so her phone is in the car with you. Not was it ringing? Did it piss you off? Was it somebody calling you and you shut it off? I don't remember ringing either. No, I don't remember okay. ringing. Okay, then why did you shut it off? I didn't shut it off. The phone was just there. I didn't even care about the phone. The phone? I just left her. Okay, so we went from her. the phone on the couch to now it's in the car, but I'm but telling the you. the first time she came over. She I'm telling you, phone. cell tower records and cell phone records do not lie. I knew they And the lie. video surveillance is spot on exact time. That phone went off while you were in the car. Okay. Okay. Then I turned it off. But what's the coincidence? It's right when we have you making the U-turn. Why well, turn it off? There's no. I'm point. asking you. I'm, I don't have a reason I'm, to. Are you sure nobody was trying to call it? No. I know I mean, you said there was did. a guy. Why would I answer it? You said there was a guy's picture on the phone? Yeah, when she was taking Faith's pulse, mm -hmm. she went to unlock her phone with whatever the thing is to unlock it. I remember seeing there's a guy and it was well, holding a puppet of some sort. Or yeah. I don't know what it is. I think it was a puppet. Yeah, that was I thought that was, too. I thought it was weird, but, mm -hmm. you know, that's who you like. Maybe, I thought maybe he was famous in some way, and she saw his act or a show, and that's why she had it on her phone. 
Or maybe that was the guy she was talking about. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until talking to Chassie. When was she taking the baby's heart rate? When she came over the first time. Okay. Before Eight o'clock is when you saw that when you last saw that phone in her hand. But yes. the next time she came over, that phone was clearly in the car. It was in the car. It, yeah, it was in the car. seeing it in her car, okay. yes. And do you remember shutting it off? No, I didn't turn it off. I had no reason Did to... you put it on airplane mode? No, I don't even have access to the phone. I don't know what her pin code is. I don't know if it's a slide You don't need type. a pin code to shut it off. What? I'm telling you that phone went off when you were in the car with it. Then what happened to it? No, I remember leaving the phone with her. When I laid her down, I gave her the phone so that she could call someone. In the event, if she woke up and was like, oh shit, where am I? Hey, at least I have my phone. So you remember as someone. much detail as to tell me that, you know, you laid her down, you crossed her hands, right? Like how'd you put her, how'd you put her hands? Down, just down on her things that I left with her. Like, I can't show you, but... Yes, and left No, show me, show me as best as you can. How did you leave her? I just laid her down. I, she had her dress, and I laid her down on her back, and I just put her hands down. And that way she had her things. They were all like, right, just all and just, What things are those? What did you leave with her? Her phone and her wallet. So she had ID. She had her money if she needed it, I guess. She had her phone so she could call for a ride. How much money did she have in there? I have no idea how much money was in there. I just left it because it's hers, and there you go. Mm -hmm. So you remember as much detail as that, but again, you don't remember I don't know where, where that was? I don't know where it is. I didn't look for geo-references. I didn't do anything. I just was like, I'm just going to lay you down and hope to God that I'm wrong. And just hope beyond hope that I'm wrong and you're okay. And that when you wake up, you can call someone and you can get back home or whatever. Because I don't want anything else to do with this stupid night. This whole night is stupid. And I don't understand why it's like this. I just want nothing more to do with it. I don't want anything more to do with any of this. It's looking really bad right now. You're leaving out the car. I'm going off the wall. You're in the car with it. Come on. You're so smart. smart. You are if I very. Was so smart, I wouldn't be no, here right you now. No, you are very. You are very smart. anything about where she is. I don't know where that place is. I don't know. When you laid her down, was she, did you put her in a, was it a puddle? Was it sand? Was it grass? Was it a bank? Was it a... It was just dry and it was still dusty. Was, the area was just dusty. Not area, but just, I don't know, just, it was just dark. How long did it take you to get back into town? I don't, it just took a minute. It was a, I don't even, it just took a while. I didn't, I didn't time anything. I just drove and Well, just, you had to come too. If you remember as much detail as that, you know, laying her down, putting her hands. Because I remember laying her too. down and she looked, she just looked peaceful and she okay. looked sweet. And, you know, okay. it just, she looked, looked like the peaceful. person I remember her being, not crazy and just. That's so, what I think she did. I think she went crazy so on you that night. So crazy. And just wouldn't shut up. Because no. you said it yourself, you couldn't stand it. She would sometimes talk for an hour or so. You just... Even the night before she talked, I just let her have her soapbox. She wanted to talk. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and talk. I was tired, but she was done. She left. She got some books. She came back. Mm -hmm. And she left. And then I went to bed. That was the whole Monday night. Mm -hmm. So... Here it is, I can see how someone like that would get frustrating. Yeah, we can. You can talk if you want to talk. You can air out things you want to air out. You can mm -hmm. be on your own soapbox. But you didn't want to hear it, though. Because well, you guys care. weren't buddy-buddy, like you said. They yeah, are not buddy-buddy, but it doesn't mean I'm going to be a jerk, either. Like, I don't, I don't know. I just don't care. I just, just didn't care about the things she had to say. So I just, mm -hmm. not ignored. I just pretended to listen. I did it for 11 years. I could do it for 10 minutes. You just, mm -hmm. oh, that's nice. Well, that's wonderful. I'm happy for you. Just say nonsense like that and just let her run her mouth because I don't believe half the stuff she says. I had no reason to. And then I didn't care. Like, who are you dating and why are you dating them? I don't, I don't care. Like, maybe you wanted information out of me that like you're hoping to carry a conversation about it, but... Maybe she wanted a reaction out of you. And I wouldn't give that either because it's just... Is it true you were going pretend. to her Facebook, checking her Facebook stuff? People say that you were, does she have like shut her Facebook page down because you kept going to it? 
No. I, I blocked her well before the divorce. And then afterwards, I was like, hey, she was always the photo taker. So on my computer and on my phone, I have next to no photos. Mm -hmm. So I went and unblocked her to go to her page. Or gave it so there were some photos. And I was like, sweet, I can copy a few. And then after that, I guess she realized that, you know, I had unblocked her and then I was blocked. And I was like, well, oh well. In so many words, I see what you, you don't want me to see, whatever it is on your Facebook. I mean, I don't care, mm -hmm. but that's fine. Steven, I don't see why she needed her laptop. She said she wanted her work laptop. Even at the hospital, she was, excuse me, smashing away on that thing. Mm -hmm. And she just kept saying, oh, it's just to send an email. Okay. Like, but she just kept reiterating, I have to get this email done. I'm like, your laptop, like, do whatever you gotta do. Mm -hmm. It's not my business. Type away. She was on it. Was she already in that car when you left the first time? No. She was still at home. Just made you've made so much effort to cover it up and cover your steps. I just didn't mention it because it didn't even seem significant to go get this laptop that I didn't even go get. You didn't think it was significant to tell significant to tell the first four or five interviews that you had found her passed out in your house, allegedly passed out in your house. Because I didn't know how to even explain that. How do I explain that? How do I tell you? That, yeah, I came back and she either hit her head or she banged her head against something or I don't know what, but she was not responsive. And I freaked out. And then, of course, the question goes to Beg, did you hit her? No, I didn't hit her. I would never lay my hand on her like that. But you're a smart, you're a smart guy, Stephen. There's no reason. Why, why didn't you just call now? Because I freaked out. Because all I'm thinking about is how this looks. This looks like I did something, and I did nothing. I didn't ask for this. I didn't push this. I didn't. I did nothing to warrant this. I just. I went to get your laptop, which I thought was dumb, and then I didn't do. And then I realized you didn't have gas, and I told you like, hey, you have next to no gas in your car, so let me get you some gas, like. Otherwise, you may not make it. You passed the gas station on the way back to the house. Why didn't you just put some gas for her? Because it wasn't my money. I wasn't going to spend my money to put gas in her car. It's her car. She should spend her money. But you were going to drive to get her laptop? Why are you going to drive to get her laptop? If it's her laptop, why should she just get it? I don't think it's such a big deal that why she Why pass the gas station on your way back to the house? Because I'm you not spending my money on her. You couldn't put a dollar or two in there for her? It's, it's not my money. Like, I'm not spending my money on her things. Like, I don't want to get the laptop. Just that, that doesn't make sense to me. She wanted her laptop so that she could do That's silly because, once again, you could just wait until you leave. So you were going to leave, leave you left the tomorrow. house at 1 in the morning to go get a laptop. Yes, and halfway there, I'm like, this is dumb. This doesn't make any sense. I think she was running the car by then. No, she wasn't. She, she was, was running the car by then, and that's the last thing you need to get is to run out of gas. Run out of gas? Run out of gas with her in the car. Then I would just leave the car, like... Like you did the second time? No, I would just leave it wherever it ran out of gas. If it ran out of gas then, like, why get gas for it? That's just dumb. I would just leave it. If it's out of gas, it's out of gas. It's not my car anyway. I was only trying to be nice. Once again, hey, you have next to no gas in your car. You should do something about that now because you notoriously don't put gas in your car. Just like she had already told me, yeah, I was going to put gas in in the morning. And I'm like... That's silly when you could have already put gas in it. You could have put gas in it 101 times by now. But if she was leaving, why not just tell her to go get gas herself? Because it just made sense to take care of it now. I just said, hey, if you have money, I'll get you gas. I'll put a gas can, whatever. Yeah, I have a 20. After looking around the house for a gas can, and there wasn't one, she had a 20. I got the gas can. I got the gas. I put it in her car. 
like here, here's a gas can. So in the future, when you run out of gas, because it'll happen again, knowing you, at least you have a gas can to like go get gas. Or if some passerby or sees you and is kind enough to take your gas can for you and bring back gas, mm. you're good. You know, like you at least have a gas can because you're going to do this again. That's how I look at it. Like this is something you're going to do because even when we were married, this wasn't the first time she'd run out of gas. Like I think it was two or three times since we were married that she'd run out of gas and had to call me to come bring her gas. And I remember it once was in South Carolina by some dealership and they were kind enough to give her gas before I got there. And another time was near the house, but not, uh, which is near that one. So it was somewhat convenient. And then once she almost ran out of North Carolina, I think she said she like sputtered into the station or whatever. And I'm thinking, oh, that's not necessary. You could just put gas in the car. So I looked at it as, I'm just gonna keep you from running out of gas because That's not going to be good for you or her now. The two of you stranded, no gas. Why did you care? I don't because understand. I'm looking at the future. I still understand why you went to go get the laptop. Because she asked. Make and turn. I refuted a little bit the at the same time. Do you, like, you see the coincidence there? The same time that phone goes off, here comes Stephen in her car. I refuted the laptop, but she just kept making it a big deal. And I said, Fine, I'll get your laptop. It, if it's that big of a deal to you, I'll go. And then, like I said, halfway, it just was stupid. And I was like, I don't even know why I'm out here. I need to just go back. This is dumb. This is really dumb. And I don't know why I'm even going to get this thing, because it's stupid to me. Mm -hmm. I only just did it because I don't want to argue. I never like arguing with her. I don't like yelling. I don't like arguing. Fine, I just, I just caved. I was like, fine, I'll go get it. Just, I just literally just caved. I said, I'll go get it. Well, again, why'd you leave that out? Why did it take how many hours? Because it didn't make sense to me then, and it still doesn't make sense to me now. And at the Why same time, did it take it just, hours yesterday for you to tell me I that you went to get a laptop? Why, I can't explain why. I can't. It was We sat and talked, and then she said, did you get my laptop? And I refused. But do you see and that? after a few minutes, I just decided, I don't want to argue with you. I want Fine, you, I'll and you will. You're going to have the opportunity to watch it again, to watch that video of us yesterday. Okay? You're going to have the opportunity for that. You didn't give that option of the laptop after I had, I had to I had to feed it to you. Because to I didn't have you. an answer to give you. I can't I, explain no, the laptop. All you kept saying was, I don't have an answer for you. I don't, I don't. Hold on. All you kept saying was, I don't have an answer for you. I don't have an answer for you. And I wasn't taking that answer because we both know it's bullshit. Because it doesn't okay? make sense. You're right. It didn't make sense. Exactly. I had to Even feed it to you. I had to say, did she ask me to go get something? Did she? Oh yeah, she asked me to get her laptop. So you see what I'm saying? You wouldn't give me an answer until I, I gave you a suggestion. Because that's what happened, though. Okay. So, yeah. But at the same time, it didn't make sense then, and that's the only reason why I didn't go get it. station at 156. Okay. And then you leave at 204. There's no way in hell. Remember when I asked you in the house today? When I asked you in the house today, what did you do when you came in the house? You said, oh, you found her. You were freaking out. Yes, I paced. You I, like, paced. I stood and then I paced. So from when you left the gas station at 156 and get back to the house, so let's say 157, 158, because it's right down the street. Still you're telling me that, open. you're telling me that in those very few minutes, you found her pass out, tried to assess her pacing, went and put her in the car because you and again on video you're oh we're doing a video walk that you're that you're freaking out you're walking back and forth pacing but you grab your bag of clothes or you 
you said you put water, and then you leave again. I'm like, like you literally did all this in like five minutes. All I thought was, I just don't want you here. I don't want you. I didn't know what else to do. I just didn't want her to She was in that car already. She was not. I just did you get him up on your times? Did you get him up on your times thinking, okay, maybe it was it? Because she was already in that car. She wasn't. I had to drag her into the stupid thing. And even then, I just, I just didn't want her there. I just wanted her to go back home and go home. Yeah, but drag her me alone. Well, not drag, drag, like by her arms, I just I picked her up, and then, yeah, I laid her to the side of the car, and then I pulled her through the car, and then I closed the door, and then I got in the car, and then I cranked it, and I'm thinking, what So those the heck? few minutes, you're sitting there, and you're the pacing, the freaking out, not knowing what to do. Because I didn't you know what to do. You carried her from, you carried her from the bedroom, carried her from the bedroom, and you went, and you laid her out in the living room. Do you remember telling me that? Yes, I brought her to the living room. Okay. So I could see because there's a better light in there. Okay. So you at no point try to do CPR, call 911. You don't do any of that. You go and put her in her car. Yes, so I could take her home is all I thought. I can just take her home and she can be out of my hair. But you didn't. You because wanted her out of your hair and you got it. Because I do. You got it, and I'm going to prove it. Not in that sense. You I wanted got it her to go home. So she could you sent her home, home already. And not just be doing See, crazy you stuff. You sent her does. home already. That is way too short. That's even a short, much shorter time period than what I originally thought when I was talking to you yesterday. She was already in that car. Stephen, she was in that car already. You put her in the car. And when you were driving south on US-1, hear me out, you were driving south on US-1 and you realized, oh shit, I'm running out of gas. That's the last thing. No because you can't leave her body in the car with no gas. Why not? Why not? Because you got to get rid of it like you did. Need so much of the point that remember you're freaking out. Remember you're freaking out. You don't remember where you went. I could just leave then. If that's what you're, I could just leave. I could just leave and walk back. Like just leave it. Her car and leave him to walk back then. There really is no emotion in there. There's really, there really is nothing in there for her, huh? What are you talking about? I'm you just, I'm going to matter what you're saying. I wanted her to not be dead in my home. I wanted whatever this was to not be affecting me the way okay. it was. So you didn't want her dead in your home. And what did you say before? You think she took roofies and that if she alleged that you had raped her? You understand that you need proof for that, right? But it's still her word against mine. And that my word doesn't mean anything. I've seen it time and time again no, where a co-worker is accused and then it no, goes through its you, whole process. You need a little bit process. more than his, his word versus her word. You're smarter than that. No, it, I'm on. telling you. In the Air Force, if a female says you did something and there's no way to prove that you didn't do what she's saying, that's it. That, it doesn't work for you. So it's without just, DNA, she says you're you're after, after, type of injury, that's it. So they'll still go after him? Yes. Or her? If, she, if a female says that I assaulted her in some way or I grabbed her. So I you thought of all this and in, in those five minutes you thought of all this, okay. Because she the third time you really had that happen. She really had that happen. Which friend was that? that? My friend Reginald Binkins had a female mm -hmm. and accused him of rape. Mm -hmm. Even though everything was consensual. She still accused him of rape. And the next day, he's in cuffs because she says he raped her. Even though he's like, that didn't happen. Everything was consensual. Mm -hmm. But the simple fact that it was his word against her word, and there's no third party to say otherwise, he still Did you not think maybe something was seriously wrong with her? Who? Trisha? Yeah. Did you not think, oh shit, maybe she got hurt somehow. Some, something happened. It didn't when she was, so you're telling me I don't want them to have, I don't want her dead in my house. So she's clearly dead already in your house. She's not dead yet. I just didn't want this in my home because I can't explain this. When someone comes to look at this and they look at all of it, none of it looks good for me. Just like now, it doesn't look good. What's all of it? Just the whole like her, scenario. Her coming over to the house to take care of the baby. Wouldn't that have been a lot easier to explain that her ass just go completely missing and then come to find out a month later you got rid of her body? Wouldn't that be a lot easier to explain? No, it's not. Because it doesn't help me still. Nothing helps me. And she was, you think she wasn't dead at this point. Do you, 
why would she even make an attempt to revive her to get her any type of medical attention? I just wanted her to not be in that home. I wanted all of that to not be, just, I wanted to take back that time frame where I went to the gas station to get her gas. So mm -hmm. I could not have even gone. I should have said, you go do it, and I'll be here. So but you were generous, you were generous enough, and you you were going to take care of her. You were going to go get her laptop. Yes, exactly. I'll go get. Oh my gosh. She asked. I refuted, and then after a while, I was like, I don't want to argue. Fine. I just caved and said, Fine. I'll go get your laptop. And then halfway there, I realized this is a stupid trip to make. This is a This is a dumb. This doesn't make sense for you to go get her laptop. When you You tell me she was only that she. That's around 12, 10 or so. I don't know the time. I'm telling you the time. I'm telling you the time. She gets around 12, 10 or so. And let's, let's say 30 minutes. You said 20, 30. Let's, let's go to 30. Hell, let's go 40. She's still asleep about half an hour or so before you say you went to go. In good faith, get her laptop because she's sitting there with this child that's already sleeping. She was already in that car, Stephen. No, she was in the car. I don't know how else to tell you. <sighs> you see how this is looking? It's not looking good for you. And it's the worst part because I can't. If I could just show you where she was, you could see that one. I wish she was. That's true. I wish she was. I can't would. show you because I don't know where that is. I don't know where that was. I don't know anything about that space, that place, wherever it is. I don't know where that is. Mm -hmm. And therefore, I can't take you because I don't know. And driving around down all those roads, every road just looks like another dirt road. None of those roads look any more significant than the last road. They just look all like roads to me. And I don't know. I you can't. don't remember passing mailbox or a straight line, no, fences. None of that. I don't remember any of that. I couldn't even tell you if a street sign or if there was a stop sign or if there was more than just that one intersection. Okay, so okay, let's say this way. So you already, you know, you had already come to because you're telling me that you checked her pupils with a with a flashlight. That's when I laid her down. You laid her down. And that was my last time checking her. I okay, laid her down. So she's clearly dead at this point. Clearly dead at this point. I was hoping she wasn't, which is why that was like the last you're thing. Hope, of course, yeah, you're hoping she wasn't, but she was dead, right? You checked her pupils. She's not responsive. All right, you're coming too. Do you leave her stuff with her? How long did it take you to get back? I have no idea. I don't know how long. I just drove back, and once I saw that I was back at the van, I was like, well, I don't know where I am now. Okay, so how long were you there when you were laying her down? How long were you there with her? I don't know. Did you stay by her for a long time? I don't. Did I you try to her. get her just, any medical attention? Well, no, I guess not. At this point, this point, she's already dead. That was my last stage was checking her pupils, and they didn't even dilate. They were like half rolled back, and I was just hoping that I was wrong still. Just, just really hoping that she wasn't really dead. That she was just unconscious still. That she just still had shallow that I don't know, but just something. That right. was just so how long did it take you to get back to her house after that? Do you do have an idea. If have you're already ideas. you already got in your mind, okay, she said, I'm leaving her here, I'm gonna leave her phone in her wallet. I, 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 that's ridiculous, but you left her phone in her wallet because you knew that Exactly, because I wanted her to be able to make a phone call if I was wrong and have ID or something, just whatever. She's dead. Who'd she got to call? I was hoping I was wrong about that. I don't, I'm, not a me, I'm not a medical expert. I don't know anything medically. All I know is I checked her pupils. They were like half rolled back, and I'm thinking, shit, whatever. Just maybe I'm so wrong. I don't know what to do. I don't know anything okay. at that point. So once than, you left her there, how long did it take you to get back to her house? Let's just go backwards. You have to know. know. I don't know. I, you had your shit together. It doesn't matter. There's, there's no problem. I don't know how long there's, that doesn't matter. There's, time there's no problem. Sure you do. You're not a two-year-old. You're not a three-year-old. You're a grown man. Doesn't you have no sense of time. Here. You have no sense of time. I'm sorry how long I drove, but I'm still stressed. And I'm still trying to make sense of an evening that doesn't make sense to me. You had your shit together enough to know to change your clothes. Just to get rid of them, yes. Exactly. Because I didn't want anything to do with that night. I didn't want anything to do with that. That was not something I ever, ever wanted. Ever. Like, 
Nothing. Okay, what did you put on that night? What did I you had on a red shirt and some shorts from when I was still at the house. That's what I, that's what I originally had on. It was a okay. red shirt and some and shorts. And by the end of the night, what, did you, what were you wearing? I had our old pants that were, in the, that were still packed. Okay, what else? I don't know. I what kind of pants were they? They were gray, I think. They had pretty sure they were gray. They were gray pants? Oh, like sweatpants. Just old gray sweatpants. Old Nothing gray special. sweatpants. Just in case it was colder than I thought it would be. or so chilly, so I had a pair of sweatpants. Okay. okay. What kind of shoes were you wearing? A pair of old shoes. Nothing special about those either. What brand were they? I have no idea. They're, they're just old shoes. I had them for a long time. Okay. What kind of shirt were you wearing? I don't even know the shirt. I don't even know what the shirt was. I don't even remember the shirt. Okay. I just know that what else did you the have bag, you? there was water. I'm like, well, this water doesn't do anyone good now but me, so I'm thirsty. I guess I should have some water. Mm -hmm. I didn't care about the snacks. I definitely wasn't hungry. And I just changed. I put on the pants because they were pants. I put on the shirt because it was a shirt. And I just walked back and tried to think. What did, you have the, what did you have the water and the what else did you have? The clothes and they were, all that was already in the bag. What kind of bag was it? It's just a black bag, an old black bag I bought um, 10 years ago in the military. It was just old. I didn't even care about it anymore, but it was still something I put clothes in. Okay, you bought it from the military, so what was it? What kind of bag was it? I don't know. The brand is just. Well, not the same brand, but was it like a like a little kid's backpack? Was it a, what kind of, what kind of bag was it? It's just a, it's a big black bag. I don't know. It's just a backpack. I don't. I don't know how was it to start. It was just a backpack. It was an old backpack that I've had for a long time. And it was already falling apart anyway, so I didn't care about it. Okay. Did you have anything on your head? There was a... No. No, there was a hat. There was a hat in that bag. An old something hat. What kind of hat was it? I mean, it wasn't even original that I had. I think I threw that in my house a long time ago. And was it like a Sully? Was it a baseball cap? Was it a... It's a hat. It's a, a cap. A, a cap? What is it called? Fitted, I think is what it's mm -hmm. called now. It's one of those was in that bag. I didn't... It was like, well, that's old, but sure. I just put it on. Just because I just, I just wanted to get back to the house and just be done with the evening. That's all I wanted to do. And just put pieces. I don't even know. I just... Did you ever think about that? Yes, and the reason why I wanted to go home. Why didn't you try to hurry back? You took, sure. what, it two hurts. hours and 43 minutes, something like that? I don't even know how long it was. It was two hours and 43 minutes. Okay. You left her alone for two hours and 43 minutes. And she'd been sick all day. So with that, and at this point, and you leaving her out there and not taking us to her, I really don't think you care for either of them. Of course I did. I still care for Patricia. I still care for her. Just because we're divorced doesn't mean I didn't care about her. Sure. Of course but you I wanted did. her gone. I just wanted her to not be in that house at that point. Like no, that you wanted point, her gone. I wouldn't want, you want her, wouldn't you want wanted her out home. of your life. You wanted her gone, and you got it. No, not like that. If it was one of those, like, hey, I'm going to take a mission trip for a year. Have fun. Do, do that. That's great. Mm -hmm. Live your dream. I've always told her, if you're going to go on some extended trip, just leave. Come on in. Good job. Please. Come back at all. Hi. Oh, we haven't met yet. What's your name? Stephen Williams. Stephen. With a P or a B? B. B. Okay. I just got a couple quick. I've had an opportunity to listen to some of your statements to Jesse today. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't been involved from the very beginning, and there's just a couple of things in my mind I need to clear up. So if you don't mind answering a couple of questions, I'd appreciate it. Do you mind talking to me? Okay, and, and you've been very cooperative, and I understand you flew down here with these guys, and I guess you even stayed in the same hotel room and so forth on the way down, is that right? Yes. Okay, and they told you all of your rights and everything, and you've indicated that you have no problem cooperating with them, is that how you feel about this? Yes. Okay, and, and certainly I appreciate that. I assume that what you're trying to do is put this all behind you, is that fair to say? Yes. Okay. Um, 
So the only thing I heard you and Jesse talk about when I just got here was obviously the night that your ex-wife disappeared, but there was something that you had mentioned about kind of referring to drama or drama or her being dramatic. Can you kind of expound on that for me? Because I'm not quite sure I follow what you meant, that she talks a lot and was kind of dramatic. Tell me what you mean by that. She's always overly dramatic in her storytelling. Everything's bigger than what it really was. Everything was more exciting than it really was. So that's just how she is. That's how she likes to embellish her stories. And it's a redhead. And I'm like, that's fine. I don't care. Once again, mm -hmm. divorce. I have my own life. You have your own life. If you want to embellish your stories, I'll embellish your It doesn't matter to me. I don't care. Right. You know, this. How, how long were you guys married? Almost 11 years. Very close to the end of your relationship. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Um, so. From the time of this incident to your divorce, you had been divorced for approximately how long? We got divorced back in, well, it wasn't final until back in February, but we were already long since separated before that. Have you been living up in North Carolina the whole time she's been down here? Yes. That whole period of separation? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, all right, so what was your period of time, April 24th, 25th, what was it? April 24th. April 24th. Just yes, because my work schedule wasn't going to allow me to come down any other time after that until Oops. July. What do you do? I'm an instructor. An instructor for? Uh, Air Force. I'm an, an aircraft maintenance instructor. Oh, okay. You're in the military? Yes, sir. All right. Um, so you're going to come down, how many days did you intend to spend with her once you got down here? Three to four days, depending on if my girlfriend was going to be able to work Thursday or not. If she wasn't working Thursday, then I was going to be home Thursday with her. If she was working Thursday, then I would have just stayed. Stayed another night? Right, because she's working, so I wasn't going to be able to hang out with my girlfriend anyway. Now somebody told me you're local, you're from Martin County? No, I grew up in Palm Beach. Well, oh, Palm, Palm Beach. Park. Where'd you go to high school? Uh, here in Hope Sound. Hope Sound. Uh, the Academy, Christian Academy, something like that. Okay. All right. But you lived in where down in Palm Beach Gardens or where in Palm Beach? Lake Park, just a little further south yeah. there. Yeah. Okay. 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 All right. So you're going to come up for a few days. Obviously, um, Trisha knew you were coming? Yeah. We discussed it. I told her when I would be there, and I only planned to stay three to four days. And just like in the past, our, our, our schedule was always very fluid. We never made like Hey, you're going to be here at this time. You're going to meet at this place. It's always just been like, hey, let me know when you get here. All right. You can come get faith. And the same for dropping her off. It's always just been the same way. Just let me know. Send me a message. Give me a call. It's always been that way. It's always been really easy and you know nice that we don't have this like super strict regimen of like this is how it has to be. So right. Well, and that's a, that's an interesting point to me to, to understand the dynamics of your relationship. Under people get divorced for any number of reasons, but. The dynamics of your relationship post, I don't even want to call it divorce because you were separated for a longer period of time than that, was fairly amicable. I mean, you all got along? Sometimes. Uh, I don't know why, but whenever we were in person, she was very nice and very amicable. Yeah. But anytime, like via Skype or over the phone, it was she was a different person. Um, it was more of a, you need to do this and you have to do that and you owe me this, and I'm thinking, I don't know you anything. Like, I've given you everything I'm supposed to do. I've done everything I'm supposed to do and then some. And I don't know why you feel like I still owe you something or why I'm still obligated to do something for you. you know? So you, did you have a child sharing arrangement and child uh, support payments that you had to make and all that? Yes. And you were making all that? Of course. Okay. And so when, why do you think she acted differently when you would be not face-to-face -face versus when you were on the internet. I don't know any of my, that's kind of nonsense. So what? And even not, even, I don't know. Like, it, me and Laura always, like, like, because Laura was there for some of our Skype sessions, and she would see how she would just act. It just, she just wasn't the same person over Skype. And I told her, like, when I'm there, she's never like this. Like, she doesn't act that way. She doesn't act this full of herself. You, like, you know, mightier than thou. Kind of, like, she doesn't act like that when I'm in person with her, and I don't understand that. Why? Over electronic means or whatever, you're, you're just not the same. You ever hear of the concept of beer muscles? You know what beer muscles are? You're in the military, you gotta know. 
You know, you know how some guys drink and they get they get mouthy and they get aggressive and they you know what I mean? They call that beer muscles. So they might not act like that when they're not drinking. Do you think that she felt like she could treat you poorly when you all weren't face to face? You know, and she didn't have to worry about maybe any physical repercussions or getting into any you know problems with you when you're over the internet? Do you think that could I be think it? it was just more of her trying to push buttons because she yeah. can't. She likes to get a rise out of me and anyone, honestly. Like I said, even when we first got married, she would talk, well, she did talk to my mom because my mom didn't like her at first either. She would just say, like, off-the-topic things to get a rise out of my mom, and my mom, of course, would react. I told her, like, if you know me, you know my mom. The well, same. What, did she, what kind of things would she say to you or could she say to you that would get a rise out of you? Uh, there was one example where I told her, like, hey, I'm going to, like, you know, it's been three months now. I've been paying for your cell phone. Look, we're, this is done. Like, you're not coming back. I've asked you to come back. You're not. That's fine. I'm turning off the cell phone. Like, there's no reason why I still need to continue paying for your cell phone when you're clearly not coming back here. And so I told her, like, hey, you have until this date, which was more than even a month, to make other arrangements, transfer the number, do whatever you want to do. But... After this time, the phone won't be on anymore. And just the backlash I got about how I owed her and I should be still be paying her cell phone bill. And, and I'm thinking, like, I don't owe you a cell phone bill. Like, you have a job, you're working, you have... How long have you been separated when that happened? Maybe four months or so. Oh, okay. And it was just like, I've been paying it all this time, and I didn't, like, I didn't say anything. But now it's getting to a point where I'm like, well, why am I still paying your cell phone bill? And, this is clearly the route we're going here. Like, it doesn't make sense. Did you feel like most of the time in your relationship when things got difficult or heated, it always had something to do with money? I think we, you and I have been talking for 10 minutes. <clears throat> Money's come up four or five times. And that always happens in divorce situations. There's always that many issues yeah. uh, that we argued about. Just, there's always a circle of things, um, same arguments. Just as a point where there were no safe topics at home. And I just decided I was done. I don't want to. I don't want to live like this. I don't want to live in a miserable yeah. home where every time I open my mouth, they're arguing. And it didn't seem to matter about what it was, you know. And I just <laughs> grew up in a happy home with one parent, then they grew up in a miserable home with two parents where they fight and yell all the time. In these period of years after the separation, <laughs> arguments, once you're all aren't living together anymore, I understand once, once you're in a relationship that doesn't work, there's no fixing it and I get you know what you're saying there but in terms of disputes or disagreements y'all would have post separation would did you find that they were always or primarily about money no the only thing we really argued about was it, it upset me that she didn't prioritize that um, in her mind it was more but if I don't then sorry for you and I'm like uh, I'm asking for 10 to 15 minutes, Monday through Friday, that's it. And if you need to move the time, let me know. If you know you're not going to be there at 5, don't wait till 5.50 something to tell me you're not going to come online. Tell me at 3. Tell me at noon. Just tell me, hey, today's not a good day. Even. Can we try again tomorrow? Fine. I'm very flexible that way. Don't but, string me along. But yeah, I'll, I'll okay. tell her, like, hey, I'm online. And then she's like, oh, 10 minutes. Okay, I'll wait 10 minutes. 30 minutes go by. Oh, I'll be on at 5. Another 20 minutes go by. Okay. Try again tomorrow. I just, it got to the point where I'm like, I'm not going to bother even being upset. I'll just try again tomorrow. So when, when you came down here uh, in April, several days, did you, I guess you rented a house or got, what, did you, is it an air bed and bath thing or whatever they call that? Airbnb. Did that work pretty good? That was my first time using it here. Oh, yeah. I've used it before. Uh, in Miami. I mean, basically morning. you're staying at somebody's house? Yes. Are they yeah. there sometimes? She came by. Um, she was making, like, repairs to something, and she came by. But, like, can you go on one of these trips and stay at a house, and you're literally in the house with the people who live there? Uh, some of them are like that. That's you creepy. Can get, you can rent a room. Uh, That's creepy. Houses, you can just I don't think room. I could do that. Um, All right, so anyway, I'm sorry. That'd be fun. So, you're down, you got this place for how many days you have it booked for? I booked it for the week, and that's because when I originally booked it, which was much earlier than when I came down, I didn't know exactly how long I'd be there. I knew I didn't plan to stay the whole week, but most people, when you, you're like, you're sending a request, you're requesting so many days, uh -huh. and they have to approve it, 
Well, in the past, I've tried a bunch of different people first. Most people don't want two to three days. They okay. want me to do four to five days. So I was like, hey, if I just request four to five days and I don't take all four to five days, whatever. Especially because when I looked at it, it was at a super low rate of like $67. When pr prior to this date, when I booked it, it was over $100 a day. And I'm like, well, this is a deal. I'm already getting it for half of what I was already going to pay for. So the two days that I don't plan on staying there, if I don't stay, I don't even care. Like, right. I already booked it for half of what I Still cheaper than the 100 or whatever it was before. Exactly. Got it was cheaper than any hotel, and I didn't want to do a hotel. So before you come down, you call Trisha and say, I'm coming from April, whatever, 24th? We come via site. I told her when I would be there. Okay. And, and did you intend to have time that you were here? The time, yeah, the time frame that I was going to be here, I, I told her, yeah, just like I always do. The time together, we, you know, she stays with me, unless there's an issue, which there usually isn't. Um, there wasn't time that passed where there was, and I, I, you know, took her back to her mom's house, and that was fine. Okay. But what about you? I stayed with my mom, so yes. Okay. All right. Um, and even then, I didn't stay the whole time with my mom because... One, we just didn't get along, and then two, I felt like her house was causing me to have like terrible allergies or something. So, like happy the trip, I just went back to the hotel room. Well, what is your? You, you said you're in the military. You're some kind of a crew leader, you said, or something? Uh, crew chief. I'm an aircraft mechanic, well, basically. What's your educational background? I have some college done. <laughs> I got two associates, I guess, with the Air Force. You get the AAs through the Air Force. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are you working on a BA or any advanced degrees or? Yes. And I assume that being in the military and doing what you're doing, I mean, you're literally there. I mean, you're working out like jets and stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I assume that there's some type of like that credit that you would get for that that would go towards an advanced degree, right? You could use it towards an A and licensing, but I wasn't working on that. Cause How long have you been in? Uh, over ten years now, I think. Twelve. Okay. You you're gonna do it like a career? I mean, you're gonna do the full twenty? Yeah, I'm already over the ten year hump, so you may as well at that point. Yeah. Okay. Anyways. Um, so it's all set up. When is the first day you pick up? What's the first day you get her? April? It was Monday. I came down. What is it? You got to help me out. 25th. 25th. Okay, Monday the 20th. I'm going to take a note so I, cause I, I get lost. All right, so you come down, you pick her up on Monday the 25th. Yes. But she did, had Trisha told you that she was ill at that time or no? No, I had no inclination that she was ill. First picked her up on the 25th? She just had a stuffy and she was a little congested, but I thought it was, I was hoping it was just minor, nothing big. Okay. Um, I didn't realize how bad it was. You, okay, so you came down here in that's the car that I saw on the video at the gas station. What is that? That red? Is it's it red? Fusion. What is that? What kind of car is that? Red Ford Fusion. That's your car? Yes. Okay. Um, you drove down in that? Yes. Okay. Pack light, pack heavy. What? How did you prepare for the? I mean, what was your? I packed a small suitcase because it fit in the trunk, and then I packed another bag just for extra clothes. I always try okay. to pack a little extra just because crap happens, or if I did stay longer than I expected, whatever. I had a few extra clothes, and I didn't know if I was going to be able to have access to the washer and dryer that were there. I didn't know that it was. Yeah. It said that, but I've been in a place before where they say they have a washer and dryer, and you get there, and you're like, I mean, it's here, but. Now I've seen another story, yeah, of that, or you got to get a key, and the key is at this person's place. I mean, you strike me as a kind of fastidious guy, very organized and neat, and are you kind of a neat freak type person, you think? No, I mean, I'm going to be clean, but that's about it. Okay. So, um, you say you packed a bag, what, like a suitcase bag with wheels on it, what, what kind of bag? It's a, it's a small... I think it's an American Airlines bag, actually. And I know in all of your cooperation, you let them go in your house, you let them search, you've done yeah, everything that they've asked, you've been completely and utterly cooperative. Is that bag up at your house now in, in Raleigh? Yes. Okay. Um, all right. So, you <laughs> time in the afternoon on Monday the 25th, do you think you pick her up? I don't. I don't even know what time it was. Well, how long of a drive is it from Raleigh? Oh, from Raleigh? It's, I came down Sunday. Okay. I came down the day before, and that was a last minute decision because Laura was like, hey, if you drive down to get there Monday, it's like 10 plus hours. So if you're going to drive 10 hours and then pick up your daughter and have to, you know, spend time with her and everything, like, you're going to be exhausted. So she suggested that I drive down Sunday, get a hotel, sleep the night, and then Monday go get her. And I was like, you know, that okay. doesn't make much more sense. Okay. And literally on the road down, I booked the hotel uh, at Fairfield, which was 
it was sixty something dollars, but I had some credits through Expedia, so I made it thirty four dollars. You're like a wheeler dealer guy. You got that. Just, that then well, that was just from all credits, and it said you can apply these credits. I was like, oh, okay. Well, sweet. All right. So what you afternoon before lunch, after lunch? Up in the afternoon, I remember because I came over in the morning to get the home. Okay. And at nine, because Candy on her site says, oh, you know, check in at nine. So I showed up a little before nine. And then I messaged her to ask, you know, well, how do I gain access? You know, where's the key? Are you coming over? Like, you know, what what's your routine? Mm -hmm. I don't know. And I probably should have asked you beforehand until, you know, until I wait until now. Um, a few minutes go by, and then she messages me back and says, like, oh, she, hasn't, she wasn't even sure if the current people were gone yet. And I was like, oh, that's awkward. And then on top of that, she wasn't, she hadn't had time to clean yet. And that she would be done, hopefully, by 11 something or whatever. And I was like, well, I don't really want to stand here while you clean. That's just awkward. Even, even in a hotel, I don't just stand there while they're cleaning. Like, yeah, but you're, you're willing to go to one of these places and stay in the house with the owner of the place? Well, I, mean, I don't awkward. want to stand over her shoulder while yeah. she's like, making the bed or yeah. on the toilet. So I figured I would just leave. I needed to do, to do some shopping because, you know, the other benefit of Airbnb is it's a full home, so I can have food, I can cook. Whatever, it's no big deal. Whereas in a hotel, I have to eat out, and even then, it's just cramped and overtly. I mean, she didn't seem to be very, very even, sick. Even that day, she was okay. running around the backyard. When was the day? When did she first get sick? Then she was already sick. She, she just wasn't that bad off. I didn't realize how bad it was. I guess the the Monday because, like I said, she okay. was just congested and stuff. When was the trip to the hospital though? Didn't you and Trisha? That was the next night. Okay, so now we're on Tuesday the twenty sixth. I gotta you gotta keep me on my time because I'll get screwed up and then we'll. I'll confuse you or myself. All right, so Tuesday. Go to the, to the hospital? Yes. And that's in whose car, hers or yours? In hers. Okay. And hers is a little white. What is it? What's her car? The Dodge Neon. That's the one we see in the videos with the hubcap or whatever it is, right? Okay. Um, whose car did you go in? Hers or yours? Her car. Her car? That, that's on Tuesday to the hospital? Mm -hmm. And what time do you guys leave the hospital? Do you, do you remember? It, I have no idea what time it was. I don't even know what time we went to the hospital. I just remember. <laughs> afternoon, morning? I don't know if it was in the evening. I just don't remember. Time. I, I wasn't referencing everything. I didn't look at a clock before I did it. I just. Yeah. I got beforehand. I was trying to debate with her about going. I was like, we don't need to go because you just gave her some children's time and all. Let's wait. Okay. You know, if you did give it to her, wait an hour or so, or whatever, wait a little longer to see if it has any effect, because how else would you know? Is she kind of, uh, you ever hear the term helicopter parent, and a helicopter parent is? No. Somebody, you should know, come on, man, you're the aircraft guy. It's a parent who kind of hovers over their kids, and is very protected, and very involved, and probably yeah. much so overly yeah. so. Yes and no, because... I was more cautious with her. Um, okay. You know, we would, uh, she's capable of walking. And Trisha is, you know, like to that wall who is all the way over here playing in the water. And I'm like standing in between and I'm like looking at her, like, what are you doing? She's like, oh, I'm sending a message. Like she couldn't she, swim. Right. She's one. She doesn't understand waves. If yeah. she, one comes in, she can't. She obviously doesn't have time. Like there she goes. And I'm thinking, like, are you kidding me? So I yeah. pick her up and I bring her back, you know, to the shore where she's not gonna get sucked into the ocean or whatever. Right. But it was just always like I was always the more cautious parent, where she kind of just had that laissez-faire, laissez-faire, it'll, it'll be okay kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I'm like you can't do that. Like, things happen. So. I Better? No. No? Uh, she was still really lethargic, very quiet. Um, she didn't really talk or communicate much. She just, uh, she just wasn't herself. She, you know, she just kind of sat there. Um, she wouldn't even really answer you when you asked her questions. Okay, the, that, is that the night then, the, as we talk about the evening of the 26th after the hospital, is that the night that Trisha comes over to your the place you're staying at? This is all the same day? 
Well, it's two different days. She came over Monday night as well, though. Okay. But Monday night was after I texted her and I said, hey, I don't have toys, I don't have anything, I don't have any way to entertain her other than television. And I don't want to sit there and just pop her in front of the TV all day. That's just silly. Okay. You know? I don't even have like colored books. But she says, okay, when well, I get off work, I'll bring you some. And I thought, great, you bring me some toys, I'll get you. And when she came over, she brought like a bucket that had a bunch of toys in it. I was like, perfect. And she stayed and talked and talked about her possible love interest and all that. And I'm thinking, how did that make you feel? I didn't care. Just, this is the puppet dude you were talking about? I didn't know that that was the guy that she was supposedly into. I, I had no idea who that guy even was. I mean, this is, um, we're, we're talking about, you're, I mean, you're, I assume you were not jealous of whatever was going on in her life. You had your own life, you were moving your own exactly. direction, right? And the only know. tie you had to her at this point in time was a, a or financial obligations you had with her. I've never even met before. Right, okay. All right, so look, so that's the 25th, the night of the 26th, after you got to the hospital, you get home. How is it that, you told me you guys went to the hospital in her car, mm -hmm. you all go back to your place? Yes. And leaves? Yes. And you don't know what time that is? No, I didn't. Dark? I mean, it's, it was dark when we went to the hospital. I don't know yeah. what time that was. Right, okay. I, well, when she's with me, I tried to send her to bed around 8, but because all day she didn't do anything but just sit and throw up. She didn't nap. She, didn't, she just laid there. So she fell asleep on the way back from the hospital. I okay. had to wake her up in the car seat when we got back. And I was like, well, crap, now she's, she's got a nap. You know, it's whatever time at night, you know. And now she's, you know, got a second wind, so to speak. So she's pretty awake. And uh, when we even left the hospital, she was doing a lot better. She had finished her first little thing of... Or the Gatorade and Pita Light or whatever. And so now she's been two and awake. And I'm like, well, it's fine. I'll hang out with her. You know, she'll be fine. And then when she gets tired, just put her in bed, whatever. That's okay, but that's so after. She's yeah. kind of. Well, well, I tell Trish that's kind of my plan. I'll, I'll put her right. in bed. It's no big deal. But then she leaves. These two, so basically, this is like the third time you would have had contact with Trish when she leaves. And she brings it. The toys in. The third time is um, you guys go to the hospital. Okay. From the, their normal center, Denise. Okay, so it's only the second time. Mm -hmm. Any conflicts, any arguments, any disputes, any disagreements? Just, just, when we're face to face in right. person, she's very. She's not the same person. Basically, okay. she's very sweet and how are you and oh you okay. nice today and you know. Just complimenting, oh, it looks like you're going to the gym, that's nice. Oh, your outfit's very nice. You know, it, it just kind of put me off. Like, what do you, why? Like, I would never compliment you. Like, not to be rude, but I'm not going to compliment you. Are you putting on a show in the presence of your child? I mean, that maybe. Okay. And, and I remember telling my mom about it, and my mom told Trish, and I was like, well, that's all I'm not getting anymore. What, what then? How is it that, that it is that Trish comes to be back at the, I keep calling it a bed and breakfast, the B&B &B thing or whatever it is? When she got tired, she said, where's mommy? Yeah. And I told her, mommy's at her house. And she says, well, I want mommy. And I said, well, mommy, we'll see you tomorrow. Or, you know, I'll take you to mommy's house tomorrow. Just trying to help her understand, like, you know, it's just me and you, you're fine. And she just kind of kept saying, I want mommy. And I'm thinking, well, I guess I get it. You did just see the both of us together. And in the past, Trish had mentioned that, once again, via Skype, she, you know, pictures of us together. And, you know, she wanted to keep this photo out of the two of us. And I was like, well, yeah, it'd be a little awkward. I get why you wouldn't, you know, a photo of the two of us together. Whatever. And so I was like, well, I guess that makes sense. You know, you saw us together. This is, you know, I guess kids naturally want their mommy and their daddy to be in the same place. Um, so I told Trish, which once again, in the past, she's like, let me know, I'll come get her. In the past, we're like right down the street. So I'll just message her and you can just come get her. And then she'll be happy. So your plan was to have home with her? 
then yes. If she was just going to be up and antsy, then yeah, you could just take her and go back home. But I still wanted to spend time with her the next day because I wasn't leaving till afternoon. Yeah, but I mean, like you're the you're her dad. Mm -hmm. Why didn't you just say, look, you know, Lonnie's doing her thing. You could spend some time with me, and why bring Trisha back over? I mean, just it seems to me the last person you want to have any dealings with when you're down here with your daughter is your ex-wife. Well, to an extent. Okay. To me, I thought, who am I to deny my daughter her mother? I'm not going to tell you no, go to bed. You know, like it's your mom. You okay, so we know exactly what time that text is, and that's at what? 12 12.08. So we're now we're into Wednesday, just so we know we're all on the on the same days. We're on 427 Wednesday. Okay. So when she comes over, what happens? What are you all doing? She comes over, um, she comes over on the couch. And so she rushes over and sits with her. She picks her up and they're watching the show that was and they sit together on the couch and they talk and just I don't know just whatever mom daughter like they just sit together you know okay and, uh, she's just holding her sitting on the couch okay so let's stop here for a moment let's stop on April 27th 12 something in the morning you've got breakfast place and the last time I heard anything about this case, the last time I had been briefed on anything that happened in this case was <clears throat> three weeks ago mm -hmm. when everything happened and you were cooperating with law enforcement and you told them what happened from the, 28th, the 27th on. What, what did you tell them? Because what, what I heard today is not the same as what you told them. What did you tell them the first time you spoke to the cops about what happened that day? I didn't tell them about her wanting me to go get her laptop. But, well, I, okay, but what did you tell them? That she just hung out there for a while and and was out of gas or something? Tell me about that. I told them that she came with her. And we were here. Okay. Great. Because I still want to spend time with her. And then I said that she left, and that's when she discovered she didn't have gas. Okay, so you told them that she went out, got her, got to her car, didn't have gas, and then what, came back? Yes. And then you did what? And then I went around looking for gas through the home. Okay. The gas can. I'm and the guy gas. next door, the, the Chinese fella or, or Japanese or whatever, mm -hmm. um, you spoke with him trying to get a gas can for him, that guy, right? Yes. Okay, did you know, I mean, did you see him over there? Could you see him from where you were standing? Because he saw you all night. He could see you coming and going or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I was just wondering if... Obviously, you must have been able to see him because you went over and asked him for a gas can. Uh, no, I didn't see him. How did you know to go over there and ask for a can? Uh, I heard his phone. Okay. He was, I don't know if he was playing a game or messaging someone or something like that. And when I was standing outside, I heard the phone. And I was like, well, perfect. If someone's awake, I can ask them for a gas can. Because obviously, I'm not going to knock on random people's doors at whatever time of right. it is. Okay. Ask for a gas can. But if you're awake and you're outside on your porch, okay. Okay, sure, I can approach you and hope they ask for a gas can. Right, and he didn't speak English, right? They had to bring mm -hmm. somebody yeah. in to interpret for you. Right. And I assume yeah. you don't speak. I don't. I didn't know what language it was. <laughs> okay. But, right. Yeah, a woman comes from inside. Yeah, he doesn't hold on, and a woman comes from inside. He has no gas, so my understanding is then you got in your car with the can, went off and got her a couple of gallons of gas and whatever, right? I had to purchase it, but yeah. Okay. Right. Well. Right. Yeah. All right. And you at that time, the video reflects what you were wearing. Do you remember what you were wearing? Yeah, it was just standing. I've been sleeping in every night already. It was just a red shirt and some shorts. Just okay. They're comfy. Okay. okay. All right. Um, so then you go back. And then your story is what after you get the gas? Then I go back and I put gas in her car. And then what? And then she leaves. Okay. All right. And now, so that's and then that was the last time you saw from her, heard from her, had any knowledge of her. That was your story, right? Yes. Now, what I asked them to do to make sure is, look, you got to go back up. You got to talk to Mr. Williams. We got to make sure we got these time frames down. You got to make sure that, and you consistently told that story exactly that way, multiple, multiple times, right? Yes. Okay. And so then today, I was surprised when they called me and said. You know, there's some additional stuff that he's adding on. So let's talk a little bit about that because that's, it doesn't make sense. 
<laughs> you know, it just doesn't make sense, and you understand that. I've heard you say in here multiple times, you know, how this is stupid, stupid this, stupid that, doesn't make any sense. So I want you and I to make sense of this where we have an opportunity, okay? So now walk me through, Tricia shows up sometime after 12.08, Wednesday, April 27, 2016. Walk me through that day, walk me through the events. All that happens. She sits there, they sit together, they talk and do, you know, mommy, daughter things. I don't sit with them because once again, she's my ex-wife and I don't, I don't have feelings for her in that way. I don't want to be rubbing shoulders with her, so to speak, you know. So I just kind of stand off and just let her ask me to go get her laptop. And I'm telling her, like, that's stupid. Why would I go get your laptop? And she just kind of kept saying, like, she falls asleep soon and then I can still do stuff with her otherwise I gotta go pick her up in the morning and it's just more it's just more work and so I didn't want to argue anymore I never like arguing with her and I just I just caved and said fine I, I'm you know I'm so with you on this whole it don't make sense go get my laptop I could envision having this conversation with my wife what are you talking about why what did she need the laptop for that's what she just kept saying work and even earlier that night when she had it at the hospital she just kept saying like i gotta send an email for work and she just kept saying it over and over like i'm supposed to know what that means or one email or multiple emails i mean did it make at, even at the hospital i'm like we're at the hospital with our two-year-old and you bring your laptop in <clears> to <throat> do work and i'm thinking that couldn't wait but once again i don't care that's what you're gonna do that's what you're gonna do i just learned don't just let it be. You um, know? Which laptop was the one she had in the car already? I don't know. I just know she asked me to get her work laptop. Okay. And the one she had at the hospital was a black. I don't know what it was, it was black. Did she have more than one laptop? As far as I knew, yeah. Because okay. that, if, if she was calling that black one her work laptop, then I remember when we separated, she had, a, it used to be my old laptop. It's a silver, I don't know if it was a Dell or HP or something, but she had another laptop. That okay. Was, you know, that's what we usually say on. All right, but so, I mean, I get this impression from you that you're this kind of laid back, non-confrontational, chilled guy. So I try to be, yeah. Just but how, I mean, you know, like, what in the hell do you need the laptop for? Are you no, see, I, I just, mean, just because, okay. like I said, after 11 years and right. before, I just, what it is, is she argue. beat you down, is that what you're saying? Pretty much. Okay. I, I didn't want all the nonsense from the past. I was just like, you know what? Fine. It's that important. Where was the laptop? She told me it was at home. Okay. Was where Where was she living? From, once again, prior weeks before, whenever she had told me, like, hey, in accordance with the... Okay, I don't know okay. that's important, but what are, you, what are you telling me? She's like, oh, well, this is our new address. Or okay. that we moved. And I was like, well, what's the address, please? And then she waited forever and had to remind her, like, hey, what's this address? Did you, and prior to the day, prior to the morning of April 27th, have you ever been to that new address of hers? Yes. Okay. I, knew, I didn't know when I saw the numbers, but I looked it up to see where that even was. You know, okay. When she originally gave it to me and I saw where it was, I was like, oh, that's where Josh was living. So I took it as Josh moved out and you moved in. Josh, her brother? Yes. Okay. But after seeing Skype, I'd see that Josh was always there okay. in the background or talking or something like that. And so if almost every day of the week this person is there, it tells me he still lives there. You know, and I didn't really question it. Once again, not my place. It's not my business. How did you, you know? plan on getting the laptop from the house? Exactly. That's why I was like, this is a stupid idea. Like, I don't even know if he's here. I don't know what his schedule is like. If he is, what do I tell him? Oh, you're... Your sister, my ex-wife, told me at whatever time it is to come and get her work laptop. Why didn't you just bring, bring her up? Why didn't you I didn't even call her? I didn't bring my phone. I just... You I didn't bring your here. telephone? Right. I well, but I'm saying, from the, from the bed and breakfast, why not call Josh and say, look, your sister's on my ass. She wants her laptop. I'm running by. Can you just have it ready? I don't even have his number. I didn't know if he was even there. I didn't know anything other than she Well, but she like, would have had it, right? Yeah, but in my, I didn't think like that. Okay, it was fine. just, okay. I don't want to argue, I'll just go get it. You know, okay. I, just, I caved, I'll just go get it. Okay, so you're driving in that direct. What car do you take? I take hers. Okay, what did you just figure, basically figure you're going to roll up there and knock on the door and say, yo, Josh, it's, well, I mean, it's, it's me, it's Stephen? I to the car, so I imagine I would just use the key if I needed to. But okay. Again, I don't even know if you Why did you take her car? Why would you have taken her car? 
because her car is blocking my car in. Okay, where was her car parked? It's, it's just the driveway, so she just pulled in. Okay, so she, your car is in front and then she's right behind you? Yes. Okay, all right, makes sense. So you back out your drive there and, and... I get like, I assumed halfway there or something and I just decided this is stupid. This doesn't make sense. I don't even know if he is here. What do I say to him? If he's not here, this is still really awkward. And then I'm like, I don't even know where it is at home. Like, I'm just like, I'm going to see so find some work. But yeah. all of it just seemed really dumb to me and like bad. And so I just turned around. And at that point is when I realized this car is next to no gas. Like, okay, so that's when we got the, your car is on video out in front of where? What's the name of the place, Jess? When it's turning around? Stonies. Stonies, you know what Stonies is? No. Okay, but is that, there's a white car without the hubcap that does a U turn there, that's going to be you having the epiphany, what the hell am I going to do? I can't get this laptop and go back. Well, I, I probably could have, but it just, so, past instances with her, all I'm thinking is this doesn't make sense. This feels really dumb. Yeah. You know, like, I feel like I'm making a gray error by even being out here right now. Like, it doesn't. Well, I mean, I think you're being, you're being a little. Dramatic. I mean, not great error, but well, it's, it's, it's a so stupid idea. Right. It's like, like a, this doesn't make sense to come get this laptop now. You should. I should have stood my ground and told her to just wait. And but I did. You know, I just didn't want to argue because I never like arguing with her. Right. I just, I just okay. Gave. So I was like, you know what? This is dumb. I'm going back. She so knows. now you're doing the the Louis, or you're doing the U-turn and heading back to your place, and that's when you say you notice her. Her car is low on gas? Yeah, that's not looking because I need a U-turn. Yeah, but I mean, wouldn't, that, shouldn't that light have come on a long time before? I did her classic thing where I didn't pay attention. I just, it was just, but like, annoyed, and I just got in the car and I just drove. Okay. And it wasn't until making the U-turn that I'm really thought like, it sounds not normal. So, so, so here's the, you know, I, I try to live in a logical world that makes sense. And you try, basically, you have an engineer's type mind. You like everything to be perfect. I mean, when you're working on an airplane, you don't say, well, it looks like this part goes here, right? right. I mean, it goes there, and if you put the wrong part in the wrong place, planes crash, people die. You can't have that, right? right? So, you know, things have to be in order, and they have to make sense. They have to be logical. The first thing that popped in my mind when I heard this change in your story, adding in the, the, the going to get the laptop thing is, why don't you get the gas right now? Why are, why are we going through all of these motions to go search for a gas can? Uh, I didn't want to pay for the gas. And and that's, another, that's, that's another theme money. you and I keep having. This money, you do money, money, money. You keep talking about money. I mean, what are we talking about? Four bucks? For me, it, was, it wasn't just the fact that it's four dollars. It's like the principle that I shouldn't have to put gas in your car. Like we're not together. Just like I shouldn't have to pay for your cell phone if we're not right. together. I shouldn't. You know, they shouldn't have to do these things for you. Like, give me a laptop. What should you be doing? But you're not, I mean, you're not, here's the problem with that. See, if you're really not doing it for her, you're kind of doing it for faith. Like, I heard what you said was, look, I'm going to put that, get a little gap stamp, put it in there next time because she's towed my daughter around. She'll have a can in the car. Right. You know what I mean? So she can maybe get gas or whatever. So, really, I'm going to worry about the whole situation. The last thing I'm going to do is spend any money on you to put gas in your car. All right. So I just drive it back, and then I tell her, like, you need to put gas in your car. And we can talk about, like, you know, why you don't have gas or whatever. And she tells me I'm going to get gas in the morning. It's the same stuff I've heard before. All right, but so at that point in time now, you get back, you don't have a laptop. That couldn't have gone over very well. Well, I explained why I didn't go get it. And, yeah, she didn't. I mean, she wasn't very happy. But, once again, what well, the gas. I told her the gas is more precedence, basically. But you didn't know about the gas until after you'd abandoned the laptop well, on the project. Back, yes. And yeah. that's what I told, you know, so I come back, she asked, like, you know, you have a laptop. And I told her, like, yeah, I didn't go get it, and you don't have the gas. Did she get hot? Did that get heated? I mean, did she get upset? No, I think she just kind of, like, realized it was a stupid errand to go on anyway. Because, like I said, I didn't really argue very much. But at the same time, my whole premise was this is why. Like, you can wait. Okay, so let's just stop here now, because there's now this whole... Again, one of the reasons I wanted them to make sure when they talked to you back when all this went down was because the sure sign that somebody, you've ever heard the concept of consciousness of guilt? You know what that means? People might act in a certain way or do a certain thing that leads others to believe they did something wrong. Like, for instance, 
people who run from the cops, what, you're, what do you think they're doing? Right. They're right, they're running because they did something wrong. People who lie, lie because they're covering something up. Okay? So the first thing I need you to get me over is how you could tell them this initial version of events and leave out this whole, as you said multiple times, stupid laptop thing. Because it was stupid and it didn't make sense. It doesn't make sense to this day. I don't understand why right. it would send on a fool there or a laptop. But you see, the, the fact, you, you keep kind of making the argument, which is it doesn't make sense. And when some, something doesn't make sense, it's generally not true. And so you not saying that originally and now coming up with it will make people think, well, geez, he's got he's to change his story to meet facts or information that maybe he thinks you know, is now important. And I don't, it, it would, you, you could have very easily said to Jesse the first time, look, we wanted to get the laptop. I, I relented because I, I didn't want to get an argument with her. I drove halfway and I said, hell of it, I came back. But then when they confront you with the fact that they've got her car going down the road and doing the turn, now you plug this laptop thing in. That doesn't look good. Do you agree with me? I understand. If, we, if I got up and I sat over there and you sat here, what would you think of me telling you that? I probably feel the way you feel. Bullshit, right? Yeah. Okay. But even when they asked about me washing my car, I was like, I if you know me, my car is always clean. I, I, I driving it 700 plus miles, I just wanted it clean before I drove it another 700 back. I yeah. smashed more bugs into it. Uh -huh. And I didn't even plan to wash it that weekend when I got back, but I didn't. So. Right. Well, and you're, you know, it's like, you can, you can look at one fact and say, ooh, that's suspicious. But then in a broader context, once you know the whole story, which I accept you're kind of like a fastidious, clean guy, you're orderly, you, so you clean your car. That doesn't, doesn't really mean a lot. Like I said, my daughter threw up all over the backseat. Well, that helps. I didn't have any means okay. to really clean it, so I wiped it up, but that was it. All right. So, so we, we are in agreement, then. You agree with my assessment that it, it's suspicious that he would tell the story the same way over and over and over, but yet then when confronted by the cops with an additional piece of evidence, you would add a fact that would conveniently explain uh, what they discovered. you agree with me that that should give somebody some cause or pause for concern? I just left it out because it was stupid. Just like going to, what was it, Sally Beauty Supply, they asked, like, oh, what did you buy there? And I was like, well, I, want, I didn't mention it because I bought my daughter some hair stuff, but... It, it just wasn't significant to the story. I went to Walmart. Right, because you're only going to focus on significant events. Daughter would say if you call her significant things. Right. Okay. So, all right. Now, you go, there's no gas. There's no real issue with her about the fact of the laptop because she's come to realize it's stupid too. And what happens with gas now? Tell me what went down with the gas situation. She mentioned that she knew there was no gas in the car, but she was about to get gas in the morning, and then after driving over here, and then obviously I didn't think yeah. to look at her gas thing when I drove it, because I was just, I don't know, just kind of in my own, like, this is a stupid errand, I don't know why I'm doing this stupid errand, and then like halfway through, I'm like, yeah, this is that, this is how I'm going to turn around. But at that point is when I'm looking and I notice, like, she has next to no gas in this car. Right, right, we got, I got that. You're, what I'm saying is you're back, you tell her no laptop, and you're low on gas, what happens? Uh, we discuss the whole gas thing, that's when she tells me about, you know, not putting gas in because she was going to do it or whatever. Okay. And then I tell her that, you know, if you have a gas can, put gas in it. And she's like, is there one around here? And I'm like, I don't know, like, it's a house, but I don't, I don't know, I don't live okay. here. here here's, okay, so here's another problem I have. Now you've been with her a little over an hour. This is the ex. You're here to see the daughter. Mm -hmm. It seems to me you should be at that point where you're ready for Trisha to go home. Get out of the house. Well, yeah. So why at that point in time is it, hey, look, you're low on gas. I just drove by an open gas station. You need to go and go get some gas. Why didn't it go down that way? Because I was just trying to be a good person. I've always tried to be nice and just good to her, even though we're not together, I don't want to hate her, I don't want ill will, I still want us to, for the most part, be amicable and, you know, mesh, I just don't want to pretend like we're buddy-buddy. Did you guys ever, in the course of your 11-year relationship, ever have physical altercations? Was there ever any domestic violence in the house? 
Uh, there was once when we were we were separated at that time too. We just weren't living apart yet. Um, in fact, we were already dating other people, but we were still sharing a house, which was silly because my lawyer then even told me he should just move, but I didn't. And uh, I didn't see it at the time. Once again, I just wasn't paying attention. I didn't see what she was doing, but she basically just. She pushed my button to the point where I restrained her. I was like, I don't know why you're so upset. I don't know why you're attacking me. I just put her arms behind her and I pushed her against the wall. Like, please stop being ridiculous right now. Okay. I don't know why you're so upset over it was a key. She had left her key with me for the weekend to go to Georgia or something. And even when she left, I was like, I don't know why you're leaving your key because it's dumb, but whatever. Um, and when I came, when she came back, because I had already been home, she was like, I want my key now. And I'm like, well, I don't know where it is because my room is trashed and I just don't feel like cleaning it. It's late. Okay. I got to go to work. And then she just kind of kept pushing it. She kept pushing it. And to the point where I'm like, all right, well, I'm going to bed. Excuse me. I'll find your key in the morning. And I went to close the door. And then she shoved the door back open. And I'm like, again, I don't have a key. I mean, I do, but. And then she just kept pushing it to the point where she got physical. And I don't want to hit you. And that other issue is the only way out of that home is that hallway that we're at the end of. So now I can't go through her to get out because that's just even worse. So I mean, it's this key issue. She just kept harping on the key, harping on the key, harping on the key. Right. And that's what you call pushing your button. Not harping, but she got physical. So then when she saw that, like, I so was ask you, when she was harping on the laptop and harping on the laptop, did that piss you off? Did that push your button? Not really. I just kind of, once again, to shut down because we've been married for so long. I just, I just learned that I don't want to argue. I just, okay. it's just you know, it's, it's a hill you want to die on. Did you? Okay. Did you, did you, did somebody call the cops in that incident? Uh, I don't know if she did or her, the neighbor she went to did. Okay. And did you get arrested for that? Yes. Did, were you in the military at the time? Yes. And were you convicted of that offense? They were pressing charges and then by the time all of it was going through, we had gotten back together, we had reconciled and she knew that she basically set me up. She even admitted, like, I knew that I was just trying to get you kicked out of the house. It was the only way I could get you out of the house was to get you arrested. You know, so, yeah, I got you kicked out so that you would be out, you know, because that was the only way she would get me out. So what, did the prosecutor drop the charge or no? Not initially, no. She did all the work to get the prosecutor to drop it and get the record expunged. Um, Has your record been expunged? Or not, but okay. I had a letter. I don't even know where that thing went, saying that it was expunged by the South Carolina or whatever. But South, okay, you were living in South Carolina at the time. Yes. In a military base. Uh, early living office. Where, where was the town? It's Sumter, South okay. Carolina. All right. So, all right. So we're back to you returned to the house after the failed the errant laptop mission, and you told her that the car was on gas. Pick me up from there. So the car was on gas, and she. She said, I was going to get gas in the morning okay. because, you know, you called me and I came for faith. And again, I'm like, all right, well, it's even lower now because I drove, you know, halfway to your place and I just turned around because I didn't, I didn't feel like a laptop. It didn't make sense. I was okay. so I came back. And then she says, well, is there a gas can? You can just go up the street and get gas. And I'm like, eh, I can look, you know. So once again, not one to be observant to send you out there with no gas in your car. I'll look see if there's a gas can. I look around the home. No gas can. Go out by the boat, no gas can. Go by the shed, no gas can. Um, and at that point, I'm standing outside and I hear the neighbors, what you call it, and I decide, okay, well, if he's outside and whatever time this is, I can ask him, you know, well, I don't know if he had time, but I can ask them if, if they have a gas can. And that's the whole, like, mm -hmm. speak English and his, I don't know who that was, she came to the door and they said, no, they don't have a gas can. So I said, crap, there goes my last hope of a gas can anywhere around here. And then she says, well, you know, gas stations sell gas cans. I always look at it too. You know, if I give you money, will you go? And I'm like, fine. If you're paying for it, once again, because I didn't feel like I need to pay you to do a service for you. Like, you know? Okay. So she gave me a 20 out of her purse, and I went and I got gas. Whose car? I took my car. Because hers said, next to no gas. When you, when you pulled in, did you pull in behind your car again? I moved her car out to the side so it wouldn't be the other way. Why, you, what, why engage in the whole ridiculous search for a gas can um, if all you had to do was take her car up to the gas station, put a couple bucks in it, and come back? Because I didn't want to pay for it. it no, I, I got you there, buddy. I'm talking about you come back to the house, mm -hmm. you tell Trisha you're out of gas, she <laughs> says to me, please go get gas, you just want to be done with this. 
you say, okay, but you go on this search for the mythical gas can, right? Not just drive a car and get gas. I assume with a the home, if you own a home, most people own a gas can. They just I, 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 I'm, I'm with you. I, I understand so that. But just borrow it and then. Wouldn't it have been easier just to drive for a car and get the gas? It was next to no gas in it. I didn't want to take the chance of it running out on the way there. Okay. So I just said, I'll just take my car, I'll get, some ga I'll get a gas can and get some gas and bring it back and you should be fine. Okay. All right. So you go to the gas station and, and so you're, you're on video, dressed exactly like you said, so I appreciate you being honest. Um, clear as day, buying gas. I forget what it was, a few bucks worth of gas. Um, 148 and then you see your car leave and then we see your car pull up at the gas station and we see your car come back to the bed and breakfast place at about 156. Okay. So you're gone eight minutes. Nobody's in the car with you, right? No, she's still with Faith. She's with Faith. You get home and tell me what happens. I get home, I take the gas can out, put the gas in her car, and then... What do you do with the gas can? I put it in her trunk. Okay. Because, like I said, in my mind, I figured I don't want gas in the back seat because sure. it's in. And I just put it in her trunk, and then that's when I go inside to tell her, like, hey, done, you got gas, but she's not where I remember her being, basically, she was on the couch or in the living room. Faith is asleep. She's in my bed. Was Faith asleep when you left? Yes. Okay. Um, so, once again, she wasn't there where I remember her being. Okay. So I walk in, I go off to the, that bin, I don't know what that area is called at home. She's not there. I don't see her immediately to the right in the bedroom. I turn around. And I'm looking towards the kitchen, and I go back to that other area, I don't, I don't, I guess the living room area technically, mm -hmm. and when I look to my right, I can see that she's laying on the floor, and I'm thinking, what the, what, I don't really have words at that point. Face down, know. face up, or she's face down. What's she wearing? She still has on her dress. Uh, Maybe jewelry on her I don't remember seeing her wearing jewelry. Okay, face, I'm sorry, face down, you said? Yes. Okay. So I just kind of roll her to see what's going on, and I see that she has a and thing on her head. What well, describe the thing? Like a, it's a small cut. Was it bleeding? Barely, not much. Okay, was there blood on the floor? A little bit. Uh, and but, but, but here, we didn't find any blood, and I can, you know, I won't vouch for many law enforcement agencies, but the crime team unit here is pretty good, and generally they'll find blood, even if it's been cleaned up. Did, did you clean it up? After the fact, like when I came back later, um, I just cleaned it. What did you clean it with? Uh, there was a plethora of cleaners, but I just didn't want it to smell. I know in the past I had my mom's house in the dumpster, it got the smell. You just pour a little ammonia in there and it fixes the smell and it kills all the bugs. It also so, kills the air, right? I don't know that. I just oh. use it for the smell. Like, I know it gets rid of the smell. Are you talking about just a little deep bit of blood? You are worried about the smell of that? I figured it would smell, I don't know. Okay. I know if you leave chicken in the trash can, it smells terrible the next day. Yeah, I mean, well, come on, we're not talking about chicken fruit, there's a little drop of blood, but, I don't, all right, I don't know. I she's got a cut on her forehead. I just wanted to wipe it up. Did it appear, what was in the vicinity of this, Eric? Did, did she hit her head on something? Was it just the floor? I didn't even take time to analyze how or whatever. Right. I just, I, I went into panic because, all I'm thinking of is what I'm seeing right now and how this looks. Okay, so let's stop for a second. Because we talked a little bit, we kind of came to an agreement, you and I, I think, on the stupid little things and the big things. Mm -hmm. And the stupid little things might be something you unintentionally forget to mention and it's human nature and it's understandable. But then the big things, you know, there really is no explanation for, for those. You, you didn't tell those guys that. And again, how about, you ever hear the concept or the term that the truth is immutable? Mm -hmm. You know what that means? No, it's no. Yeah, well, what it means is it never changes, mm -hmm. right? The truth is always the truth. I mean, you can't change because then it wouldn't be the truth. And when people tell different versions of the truth, we come back to this concept of consciousness of guilt we talked about earlier, remember? Mm -hmm. Okay. And so that's a real big thing. Mr. Williams, that you come back and Trish is laying on the floor with an injury. And if you leave something like that out, suspicious minds are going to think that's not true. 
that sounds to me a lie. It sounds like somebody's trying to cover something else up. Why didn't you tell them that the first time? Because I had no way to explain how that happened. I had no way to explain how I come back and she's on the floor, other than them just assuming I did it. And I would never do that to her. I would never hurt her. It's just not me. I don't. Right, which, may, which, makes, which makes it even more reasonable that you would have told him that but from the outset. I've never hurt this woman. I love this woman. I would never do anything to this woman. I came in and she's laying on the floor. Let me, let me make it one step easier. Where is, your, where is your cell phone at this moment? Somewhere in the home. In the home, right? When, what about the house itself? Does the bed and breakfast have a landline? I honestly don't know. Okay, but you know... You, you're a sharp kid, you know, 911, boom, cops are there, ambulance, she gets treatment, right? But I didn't. Hold on. You, this, I'm going to ask the question just simply, but you know that's how 911 works, right? Yes. You pick up the phone, you call them, you say there's something wrong with my ex wife, please send an ambulance, right? Yes. And you did not do that, right? No. Now, again, I'm going to get up and I'm going to take your seat, you're going to sit here. Come on. Because of how it looks. All I thought about at that moment is how does this look? You, you can't fix how this looks. There's no other way to say. Here's the problem with that. I, I, okay, fine. That, okay, I'm, I'll concede that for the purpose of our conversation here. But you told them she's still breathing. I checked. She was just shallow. Okay, but my point is she's alive. You had an opportunity to save her life. By simply calling 911. And how it looks comes out in the wash. I mean, you say she fell down or whatever. I mean, what what happened to her in eight minutes from when you left to get gas and you come back to see her on the floor? I don't know, and that's the problem. Because all I'm thinking is, in the past, she... This, this, is, this is a game. This is some sort of, like... I'm setting you up. I'm I'm killing myself. I'm going to kill myself to send you up. I don't think she was intentionally going to kill herself, but I just feel like she did something. It didn't work the way she intended it. It went too far or whatever. And now it's I'm screwed because I can't explain this. I don't know what this is. I don't know what she's trying to pull. I don't know why even because I don't know. I just don't know why you would do this to me. When, as far as I could tell, you moved on. But all, all of you, again, all of you saw was this little abrasion to her forehead and she was laying on the floor. Well, the abrasion was after I turned her over. Okay. Yes. Okay. One thing I want to make sure we're, we're, sure we're clear on here is, is, is originally you had made some statement. You didn't know if she had overdosed on drugs or something. Did, did you say something like that earlier? Right. Because okay, I mean, we know, know that's bullshit, pills. right? Because we're talking eight minutes. You can't take a bunch of pills and have them knock you out in, in a period of eight to ten minutes. So we know it wasn't okay. that, right? Okay. Well, do you not agree with me? I don't know. I don't know anything. I just know okay. I come back and she's lying on the floor, and all I'm thinking is, I'm screwed. Like, I don't know what to say about this. So what do you do? At that point, I moved her to better light. Nothing... I didn't do anything, and I just put her in her car, and I'm like, I'll just take you home, and I can be, just, you can go home. Just, right. I don't want any of this. I don't know what you're doing. You can just go home. So, do you, do you fireman carrying her out? Is over your shoulder? Are you holding her, like, just, like cradling her? Cradle her, yeah. Okay, so, you're walking out of the front door of this house. Well, I'm this, it first. Oh, well, yeah, right? And you're carrying a, I'm not going to say lifeless, because we know she's still alive, but a, a an unconscious woman out to the car correct right yes okay and you put her you say in the back seat of the car yes and you go where i go back inside and i grab my bag and i grab water because i'm thinking if she comes back right, hold on what bag what bag it's a it's an old backpack i had i just grabbed it because it's a bag i thought bag backpack i just grabbed it and i threw a water bottle in okay, you, i gotta say you know how we talked about the laptop thing it was stupid mm -hmm. This, why do you need a backpack to drive? What was your what were your plan when you put her in the car? Where were you going to take her? I originally was just going to take her home. I just figured okay. if if this was like a roofie trick and she wakes up at home, then clearly I didn't do anything because you're home. I'm at my place. Right. You can 
be mad or whatever they find didn't work, but it didn't work. Right, and she waits up in the back of her car in the front of her house and no harm, no foul, right? That's, yes. Okay. And, All right. and so to accomplish that task, you equip yourself with a backpack. And just it and water. Remember, we're trying to be logical here. And I understand. None of this, none of this makes any sense. Okay? And one of your arguments is, it doesn't make any sense. You're like making my argument for me. It doesn't make sense. And when something doesn't make sense, it's generally not the truth. But your plan is to go take her to the house and leave her, so you pack a backpack with water and what else? I just grab water and I'm only out, I grab a, it's like a snack bar. I don't even know what type of. What are you wearing now? Uh, same clothes. Red shirt and the whatever that's on the video from the gas? Yeah, I'm just still wearing the same stuff, yeah. Okay. Okay. And so you packed water and what else in the backpack? There were uh, like kashi bars, I think they were called. Um, I brought some from. The, uh, from North Carolina. So you have a whole backpack just for a bottle of water and a couple of kashi bars? I just grabbed it because all I'm thinking is I need a bag to put this in. So I just, the backpack is a bag, I just grabbed it. You need a bag to put what in? The water in the snack bar. Why? Because I thought if she comes to water, if she needs food, there's, a, I don't, it just made sense to me and I just grabbed it because I was like that, I don't know how to treat you, but I don't know what's going on, but if this helps, fine. Okay, so the the only thing in this back, this is the backpack we see you on the video with, right? Yes. Okay, and the only thing that you got in that whole backpack is a bottle of water and two kachi bars? No, it was already packed. I never unpacked it. Okay, that's what like I'm at. What, what was in it? Packed. What was in it? That's what I'm asking. I just had extra clothes. I always pack more than one outfit or more than... If I'm going to be like three days, I'll probably pack five days worth of clothes, you know, just to be on the safe side. And five like, days of clothes consists of what? Five pairs of shorts, five pairs of underwear, five pairs of uh, five shirts? like that. Uh, and you're telling me you couldn't get all that in a regular suitcase? No, because the shoes I brought, I brought more than one type of shoes. I took up too much space, but it was, it was after the fact. Anyway, I didn't care. I okay. didn't make an extra bag for a few extra clothing. Like, I didn't know if it was going to be too chilly, so I had... You know, sweatpants okay. instead of shorts. So, is it your plan to leave the bottle? Like, she's laying in the back of the car. Is she still breathing in the car? As far as I can tell, yes. I just put okay. her in the car. And we, what was your plan? Room. To pull it up in front of her house and put a bottle of water and a kashi bar in the back with her? Yeah, just here you go. You're fine. And then, how are you going to get home? I was just going to walk. However far, just walk it home and just, just leave. Just be out of there, be nowhere around you because this craziness I can't deal with, which is the reason why we're divorced. I can't, I don't want drama, I don't want crazy in my life. You know, I just, I like simplicity. Mm -hmm. And right, and so this, so your plan, your simple plan was to leave her in the car at her brother's house. Now I understand that when you first started, when your, when your story began to evolve last night or yesterday, you initially told them that you actually did take her over and leave her in front of her brother's house in the car, right? That's what I wanted to do, yes. Well, no, no. I thought, did, did he say he did it? Yes. You said to them, and remember, all of this is, you know this is recorded. Obviously, you're a smart guy. And the reason we do that is for your protection and for ours. So it can't be said that we did or said anything that isn't recorded for all time's sake. You're on video telling these guys that you did that, that you left her in front of the house at your brother's, right? Yes. That's a lie. Yes. What kind of people lie? Innocent people or guilty people? Guilty. Yeah. And so, why did you lie about that? I mean, look, I, I'd like to keep track because, first of all, we have, I can't tell you how many lies you would have told because every time, there's a lie by omission, too, by not mentioning something. Every time you told them about how this incident went down right after Trish's disappearance, you left out the whole laptop thing, not to mention all of this other stuff. So those were all lies. Um, now you lied to them later on about returning to her house. Why are you lie? Why are you? Tell me why you lie. Because all of it looks bad. Right. It, makes, it looks much worse when you lie. I it's, just wanted to leave her home and then be done. Mr. Williams, when a jury watches this videotape, and what they see is a continual, constant evolution, and then lies in that evolution of the story. They're going to get somewhat suspicious. It's going to create some concern in their mind that you did something wrong. Would you agree with that? No, I just wanted, 
I didn't have a plan. I, I didn't know what to do. All I wanted was just to be done with this night. And but then that's what, the very first time you met with them, you should have said, this is, the, this is what happened. I didn't know what to do. I had no plan. I, this is crazy. I don't know how to explain it. But you lied when you first talked to them, didn't you? Yes. And then you lied again to them yesterday when you talked to them initially for a while, right? Yes. And then when your story started changing, you lied even in your new story because it's changing to, from yesterday to today, right? No. That you took her and left her in the car in front of her trailer. You told them that, right? Yes. And that was a lie. So that's a change, right? Yes. Okay. So I just want to, you and I are on a road now. And this road, and I promise you, will end at the truth. Okay? When, when you leave that house with Trish in the back seat of the car, your backpack, your water, and your Kachi bars, where do you go? I just drive. I head down towards our home. And I didn't stop at her home. I wanted to, but I figured it was too late, and I didn't even think that was a good idea after the fact. And so I just drove. And then I got to the intersection, and I took a right. And then after that, I just... You drove north or south? Out of the out of the house, out of the Ponciano place. It's the right let me, south. Let me tell you something I picked up on when we were talking. We were talking about the bed and breakfast, and we were talking about... You were very... Mm -hmm. You were very detail-oriented. You were very specific. Mm -hmm. You were talking about rates and times and accommodations and all. You had all the details down regarding the front end of this trip. And we, I had that plan. I yeah, knew where I was going. I, I got you. Okay, going. fair enough. But you know, the, not the big deals, not the big issues that you need to remember, not the stupid things we talked about earlier. You're now driving around with. At a minimum, your unconscious wife in the back seat of her car. And these are now the big things, which no jury in the world is ever going to believe you don't remember these real big things. Trust me. So, what direction do you go? Turn right by the neighborhood. That's, it's a one way when you come out of there. Okay, what direction would that be? South and US 1. Okay, south on US 1? Yes. All right, and then you get where and take a, you said you took another turn? To the right. Okay. And it was, it was a major intersection, I just took a right. And, and I just draw, I don't even Now, you went to drive. school here, you went right there in Hope Town. You know the names of the roads and the streets in this area? I haven't lived here in, I mean, you know how long. I, I've been here since 1980 and the roads have, have not changed. But I mean, you got US 1, you got A1A, you got, I've moved. I don't keep track. I don't even know where the high school is right is. there at Bridge and, and at the end there, at the end of Bridge. What's the high school you went to? Okay, so I don't even know the name of that road it's off of. All right. I know you have to go down and you have to turn, but I don't even know the name of that road. Right, and they, they took you out there today to show. I, I don't. Let me make something clear to you. I don't need your body. Don't. Don't need it. I know you're mistaken. That that's the big deal. I don't care. Don't ever tell them where the body is. Don't make no difference to me. I don't know where the body is. I mean, I know. But when I talk, hey, when I talk to you about consciousness of guilt, this bullshit story that you're giving them, and your refusal to take them to where the body is, is the strongest evidence of consciousness of guilt that we have. I can't take you to a place I don't know. That. You don't know the big thing. But I'm not. I don't. Listen, you didn't hear me, Miss Williams. I don't care. I don't care. I want to get down to what's going on now. So now you've got a woman who is at a minimum unconscious in the back seat of her car. You're driving around with your ex-wife in the back. It'd be very difficult to explain that one, right? Yes. Yeah. And you do what with her? I just drive. I don't know what okay. to do, so I just drive. Is she breathing in the back? Can you hear breathing or anything? No, I can't hear that. So I don't know how I would hear that. Right. You're just driving. I'm not paying attention. At I'm some point driving. in time, your conscience doesn't kick. Do you have a conscience? Yes. Do you? Yes. I mean, you, 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 we, we all know. This is not a question of whether or not Trisha is dead. Trisha is dead, right? Trisha is dead. Yes? I don't know. You know. Come on. I left her. It was just a matter of, I hope I'm wrong. Okay. I hope that she's okay. not. Now, now though, 20-some-odd, uh, a month later, 
let's not bullshit each other. She's dead. You know that, right? I know. We well, know that. I know she could have came to and wandered for all I know. I don't know we where she is. We clarified that though. yesterday that she was dead. But I don't you... know where she is. Okay, okay. but she... I, I, I didn't. You, don't, you didn't hear me. I don't care. Searching. You should have found her. I would imagine you would have found her. That's, that's not... That's... That doesn't matter. You don't have to prove how somebody was killed. Law doesn't require that, so it's not a big deal. So, you're driving around with her in the back of the car. How long are you driving for? I don't know. Well, I, I mean, is it five minutes? Is it ten minutes? Does it seem like hours? I'm not paying attention. I don't even know how long it was between all of this. I didn't okay. keep trying well, to so time. What, do, what, do, what we know from the videos is, just check me here if I'm wrong, is that mm -hmm. he leads? in Trisha's car at 204, right? Yeah. Okay? And then we don't see Trisha's car again until sometime around here, 436? 438. 430 something, so about two hours. Now these are the big things, Mr. Williams. These are the big things that you can't, for two hours you're driving around, or I should say, you're doing something. You couldn't be driving too much, right? Because you only got about two gallons of gas in that car. So you couldn't have been driving the whole time, right? Right. Okay. So you drove somewhere, and again, you don't know where. You don't know this one big thing, but you know you drive somewhere down. I guess you told them a dirt road, right? It was dusty. So dusty. Dirt. Now they told you there was dust underneath the undercarriage of her car. Is that why you then said it was a dusty, dirty road, or was it really a dusty road? It was really a dusty road. You know, a lot of times, what I just want to make sure of something here. I think I know the answer to this, but a lot of times what people will say is, well, the detective said X, Y, and Z, and I was just repeating that to make them happy. I was just saying what the detective said. Nobody's putting any words in your mouth here. Is that correct? Yes, the road was a dusty road. Right. I'm talking about the whole shebang, sir. Nobody's putting words in your mouth what happened the morning of April 27, 2016, when your wife disappears, right? This is your story. These are the facts as you remember them, right? Uh, so far, yes. Okay, okay. If I, at any point in time, say something that's putting words in your mouth, please feel free to make it known to the record that, that I'm doing that. So we got two hours. There's no way on God's green earth you're driving to Trish's, and we also, incidentally, we pulled the gas tank out of the car, and we know how much gas was left in the car. See, these things are not looking real good for you. Mm -hmm. And we know that how much gas you bought from the gas station, and just do a little bit of math, figure out what the mile per gallon is on that vehicle, and we know about how much driving you could do. And you sure as hell can't drive for two hours on that kind of gas. Do you think that? Probably fair to say? You put the gas in. Sure. Sure. So that means you weren't driving the whole time, you were doing something else. I said I wasn't driving the whole time. I just said I spaced and I drove. You spaced and you drove. I just tried to figure all this nonsense out. Did you go right, right? And as she's laying in the back of the car, your conscience, I asked you this earlier, I asked you if you had a conscience. Your conscience never kicked in and said shit. Maybe she's still alive. Maybe I should take this opportunity to save a human life. Not just a human, but the mother of my child. Did, you, did that ever kick in in the two hours when you're driving around with her in the backseat of your car? So you're insinuating because I didn't think that I don't have a conscience? It's Well, well, well yeah, no, I'm not insinuating. I'm saying it. That doesn't mean I don't have a conscience. Of course I have a conscience. It's just that thought never came to me. How could What could be more important in the grand scheme of things than the preservation of human life? And I'm talking human life for somebody you don't even know. Not somebody who is the mother of your now orphan child, or motherless child, I should say. So it's, I'm not asking you just randomly, how would you feel about this, Mr. Williams? I'm saying, if two hours with her in the back seat of this car, it never dawned on you, shit, I'll just have to deal with the consequences. I hope they believe me, but I need to see what I can do to save her life. That never dawned on you. I didn't know what to do to save her life. Oh, let's see. 911. Did you have your phone with you when you were out there? didn't even think to grab it. No, you didn't think to grab it. And you know why? Because you know we can follow you with your phone. You know that, right? I mean, everybody knows that we can follow a cell phone. Yeah, of course. Yeah, right. I grabbed food in case she woke up. Yes. Okay. But, but you didn't take your phone with you. No, I didn't think I needed a phone. I just grabbed the bag, water, and hachi bar. Right, right. Water, food, bag. Okay. So anyways, we, we. so the first thing was you couldn't call 911. Well, her phone was in the car, wasn't it? 
Yes. Okay, so you could have turned her phone back on and called 911, right? I don't know her code. Well, I don't okay. Know her past good, good point. Good point. That's another you odd code fact. For 911. Well, maybe he doesn't know that. Did you know you didn't need a code for 911? No, I never okay. tried using That's phone. completely reasonable. I believe you. I didn't even try to use her phone. I just thought, okay. I don't want Why did you turn it off in the first place? Because I didn't know what to do with it. But that doesn't make any sense. How does that help you? So, because we know, right, from the facts that you turned that phone off some point in time in the uh, the, the computer trip. I, I'm just going to call them a computer trip. We got the computer trip, we got the gas trip, and then we got the disposal of the body trip. So, sometime in the computer trip, you turned her, her phone off. Why? I don't know. I just didn't need it. I turned it off because I didn't need her phone. Right, but she, you didn't know she had fallen yet because she hadn't fallen at that point in time, had she? I had no idea. I wasn't there. Well, yes, you did know because the computer trip is a trip which results in you being home telling her there's no gas in the car. See, here's the problem. When you lie, it's kind of hard to keep it going. I'm not lying. Okay. I don't know that she's fallen. I don't know No, yet. she hadn't fallen. You knew she hadn't fallen because when you get to her house, when you get back to the bed and breakfast, yes. you have a conversation about gas. Yes. Okay. I said that. Why are you turning her phone off before that conversation about the gas? Is she like already I dead? don't need it. Right, because if you're driving around with that phone on in your car, we're going to know where that car is going, aren't we? It wouldn't matter. I don't need it. It's just, it's not my phone. I don't want right. it. Turn it off. No, don't touch it. Don't touch it. What's the, what, it's not your phone. I leave my phone laying here. If I walk out, are you going to turn it off because you don't need it? Here's my phone. I'm going to get up and go take a piss. You're going to turn my phone off because you don't need it? Yes. If you I see how the stranger hey, leaves their phone, then I don't know they're coming Remember that stupid yes, computer story? I turn it off. Remember I'll that turn stupid it laptop story? This is, a, this is a stupid thing. So why did you turn the phone off? Sir, yeah, but just be honest with me one time. And I don't want to mess with her phone. I but you did mess with it. You picked it up and you turned it off. But by definition, that's messing with it, isn't it? It's touching me, yes. Okay. Okay. All right. So, any, so the first one that I got to was the phone, but you were correct in that you didn't know you could call 911 with the phone off, nor did I. We all learned something today other than the, the detective. The next one is go to a hospital. I don't even know other than, yes, you did go to the hospital. I don't know where the hospital is. It, I, 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 sure, of course not. And so you pull over and you ask directions. You stop at the gas station, you say, sir, where is that? Where is that? Or you pull in the gas station and say, please call 911. Or you say, sir, can you please direct me to the nearest hospital? All of these are things you could have done, right? If I was near a gas station or there were people, yes. Well, when you left with her in the back of the car, we know there was a gas station within minutes, two minutes of where you were, right? Yes. And for the two hours that you're out and about, tell me, we know it's two hours, right? Do you agree that if, if we know when your car, her car leaves the bed and breakfast, and we know when the car ends up being back where you leave it in front of his house, her, her, boy, her brother's house, her house, if that's two some odd hours, you are in her car for two hours, correct? No. No? Um, I have her car, yes, but I don't know where I am. And I'm not driving it for two hours. Okay, are, there, are you stopped for an hour? Are you stopped for 45 minutes? Are you stopped? When you go down the dusty road... I don't know how long. I, I, I don't care. Oh, I, what we know, asking, no, I what, know. What I'm saying to you is, I'm not asking for you to give me times. Okay. okay? I'm asking for you to tell me what you were doing. We know the time. Okay. The time is set in stone. It's two hours and something. Okay. All right. And so for two hours and something, you are in or around her car with her at a minimum unconscious or lifeless body, correct? Yes. Okay. What are you doing? I don't know what I'm doing. I okay. don't know what to do. These all are the big things. In my head is this all, it's no. a terrible situation for me. Now. Here, let, let's, let me, let me, let's role play. Okay. Uh, Mr. McAdol, I pulled down the dusty road and I sat there. It could have been hours, and I just thought, what the hell am I going to do? What the hell am I going to do? Or, Mr. Backdall, I drove around for a long time. You know, we know it couldn't be that because you'd run out of gas. Um, or, Mr. Backdall, I parked on that dirt road, and I walked up and down, up and down the road, pacing, because I've got this situation that I can't explain. I can't. Going on in the back of my... Right. 
What are you doing? What are you doing for two hours? Now, a suspicious person would say, you're disposing of a human body. But I don't know how to do that. I don't know anything about disposing of a body. You can't dig a hole? No, with my bare hands. Okay, well, well you don't need to use your bare hands. You can use a shovel. I don't have a shovel. Okay, all right. But anyway, I'm saying it's suspicious, Mike. I'm not saying that's me. I don't have any tools. I don't have. I want you to tell me what were you doing. I gave you some scenarios. I said you could be digging a hole to put a body in it. You could be pacing. You could be sitting in the car thinking, what the hell am I going to do? What were you doing? I pulled over and I sat. And okay. I thought. And I didn't know what to do because, yes, I'm afraid. I am panicked. All I'm thinking about is everything I know is done. My life that I worked hard to get to. Uh, I but you haven't done anything. anything. You didn't do anything. It's not how, I can't say that. It doesn't look like that. It's it's always going to be a matter of how does it look. How does it look now? It always it looked bad from the get go. It looked bad. But does it look? If you had called the cops the moment you came in on Trisha laying on the floor, called nine one one and got an ambulance there, do you think that would look worse than where we are today? Yes, because depending on what she had done, assuming it was her setting me up again, then now it's just her telling them that I did something. Her telling them that I hit her. Her telling them that I pushed her. Her telling them that I did anything in any way to her, and I can't vouch that I didn't. And so you don't say that that's not what happened. And so instead of manning up, manning up and dealing with that, you threw her unconscious most probable lifeless body in the back seat of her car drove her out into the wilderness the mother of your child and disposed of her body that's how you ended up handling it right i didn't know what i was doing in the first place i just didn't know what to do if you're so confused and so out of it in terms of not knowing what to do is it possible you don't really know what happened between you and her is it possible something else happened is it possible she pushed your buttons Definitely not. She was very cordial the whole time. She was nice. Every time we're in person, she tends to be what we call normal. Okay, so you're sitting down this road, which which I know you now, Jesse's. They they really want the body. No big, I, I don't need it. But now this road, where you have no idea where it is, what road it's off of, or where it is, and you're sitting in this car for a long time, long time, and you do what? What do you decide to do? I took her out of the car. Yeah? And I laid her down. She breathing? Not that I can tell. Okay, so she's dead. She's dead. I don't know why we had to go through to get to this point. You said it to Jess already earlier, but she, she's dead now, right? When you take her out of the car and you lay her on this dirt road, this dark, desolate dirt road, you lay the mother of your child, she's dead, right? As far as I can tell, she's not alive, but I don't know that. Okay. I'm, I'm not a doctor. I don't know. I just know. I just don't want right. to be a part of you this. Didn't, you didn't, like, see if she had a pulse. You didn't touch her skin to see if she was cold. to her pupils. I just seemed like something to do. Just see if they responded. And they were, like, half rolled back. And then I freaked even more. And I'm just... Right, was she cold? Was she cold to the touch? No, I don't remember being cold. I just okay. I just looked at the eyelid to, to see if I could see, like, if it would... If it would, what do you call it? Dilate, I think it's a term. And it didn't? No, and, and then when I saw her eyes, it was like half rolled back. I didn't, I freaked even more because it's not dilating, it's half rolled back. I don't know what Her chest do. wasn't heaving, she wasn't coughing, she wasn't sputtering, there was no. no I, as far as I could tell, she was. She say wasn't. it. Say it. As far as I could tell, she was not alive, but I don't know. No, 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 I don't like that word. I don't like not alive because that's kind of squishy. I like the word dead. She, as far as you could tell, those she was words, dead, right? Then those are your words. Well, can you, you can't say dead? No, I'm not saying she was dead. I don't know that. Can you say as far as you could tell, she was dead? No. Okay. But you could say as far as you could tell, she was not alive. She was unresponsive, definitely unconscious. Mm -hmm. And I hoped beyond all right. hope that I was wrong about the situation. And so you, you, you pulled her out and you just laid her right there on the road. I laid her down and I crossed her arms. On the middle of this dirt road, right? So, yes, not in the middle of the Okay. Off to the side. Okay. Did you leave the kachi bars in the water with her? No. You didn't? No. Why? Because I just wasn't sure of anything at that point. I just didn't think to leave them at that point. I just Because you knew she was dead. I didn't know that. You brought the water in the kachi bars in case she woke up. That's what you told me originally. In case she came to. Yes. Yeah. But now when you're dumping her on the side of the road, on this dark, desolate road, dirt road, 
You don't leave the water in the Kachi bars because you know she's not unconscious. She's dead. I'm hoping that's not the case. Okay. And so, you know, let's go back to when you walk into the house and she's laying on the floor and you're thinking to yourself, God, I know, what am I going to do? How am I going to explain this? This is why you don't call 911. Nobody's going to believe it. This is her being dramatic. She's setting me up. She's setting you up by knocking herself unconscious and ultimately killing herself, apparently. Um, you don't know how to explain. You don't know what to do. So you dump her on the side of the road. What in the hell do you think is going to happen when we find her body? Who do you think they're going to come looking at? I didn't even think that far ahead. I didn't think that far ahead Well, but all. you thought far ahead enough when she's laying in your living room, on the floor in your bed and breakfast, that you can't sure. explain it. How in the world do you think you're going to explain her life? The last person on earth to see Trisha alive is guess who? Who's the last person on earth to see Trisha alive? I don't know. Because as far as I know, she could have come to. I don't know that. I just, I left. Okay, let's, I'll play the game with you. Because you like to play this little game. Let's, let's just assume, without stating it, you know, let's just assume she's dead when you leave her lying on the side of this dirt road. Let's just assume she's dead. Who's the last person that saw her alive? You tell me then. Okay, I'll tell you. Okay, you want to tell me that I killed her and left her. I didn't kill her. I didn't do anything to the woman. I, didn't, I, didn't, I, didn't, I just wanted her to be okay. Who, who was the last person to see her alive? That's all I'm asking. It's not, I didn't say that. I said you killed her? That's what you're insinuating. Oh. Everything you're saying is telling me that I killed her. Okay. That's what you're trying to Who's say. Who's the last person that saw her alive? I'm the last person I've seen her. As far as I know, yes, I'm the last person I've seen her. Alive. I hoped alive. she was still alive when I left. Okay. I'm, okay. And who was the person who lied to law enforcement about where he was or what he did or the circumstances surrounding this entire episode? Who is that person? That's, yes, I did. So once you leave her on the side of this road, I mean, were you hoping somebody would find her there? Of course. Uh, Couldn't you come too? Of course. And so that's why you would leave her on a dark, desolate, dirt road in the middle of nowhere, because you're hoping she'd come to and somebody find her, right? Yes. Honestly. Why didn't you just take her down, pull around the back of the gas station and lay her out there in public where you know somebody's going to find her? Why didn't you leave her out in the woods? Because I don't well, know where I drove to. I didn't plan to go. I just didn't plan. I didn't think. I didn't plan. Just, you had over two hours to plan what to do with your wife's, your ex-wife's dead body. But that's not something I do. I don't plan murder. I don't plan okay. dumping bodies. I don't, I don't plan knocking people off or whatever. That's, that's, I don't do that. You were sitting in the car on the street. Okay. And you were sitting in the car on this dirt road with your dead wife in the back seat of your car. You were sitting in the 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 car. You were sitting us that you're hoping she's not dead and that you lay her out there without water or khaki bars incidentally and hope she'll come to and somebody will find her. That was your plan. You thought of that and you executed that plan for lack of a better descriptive term. You could have just as easily taken her to the public parking lot off bridge there and laid her in the middle of the parking lot and drove off. And the same things could have happened, right? She could have come to, or somebody could have found her. But she took her somewhere where we'll never find her. Do you think that's suspicious? I didn't know where to go anyway. Oh, I'm just asking you. Just no. Play. You don't I think that's to know where I even am. You don't think it's suspicious to take a dead body out into the wilderness and dump it on the side of a road? You, it, I left her. Right, right, left her. Left her. You, right, because you weren't sure if she was alive. So I was hoping I was wrong about that. What was going to happen if she wasn't alive? If she was alive? Then I was hoping she would wake up, she would call her brother or somebody right. to come get her. And then probably call a cop, right? Because that's the whole reason we ended up from the bed and breakfast to the side of the road. That's why you didn't call 911 because you were worried, how the hell are you going to explain it to the cop? If you left her out there and she was alive... Listen to me now. If you left her out there and there was any possibility she was alive, you're back to you're back to jumpstart. I don't think that way. I don't know what to do. 
You knew, you knew me like, like I had this whole grand. I didn't have any plan. No, I didn't know anything I, hey, to do. This is not a grand. This was the most poorly executed murder well, in murder. history. I didn't murder her. Okay. You had an opportunity to call 911. You told us in your own words, correct me if I'm wrong, I didn't do it because I didn't know how I could explain this, correct? Yeah, I didn't know. I didn't want to deal with that. I didn't know what she was trying to do to me. I didn't know if she was going to say I knocked her out and raped her or abused her or whatever, right? Yes. So what you do then is you take her out on a dark dirt road in oh dark 30 and you leave her on the side of the road with the hopes that she'll come to her, right? Yes. Okay. And that's that's your story. But that's not like I plan. It made it seem like I just drove like, oh, yeah, I didn't know where this wonderful place is. I just drove. No, you had it. it and drove. You, here's the deal. Again, they want, they're all really worried about the body. They keep talking about the body. No, I know you don't oh, care. Okay, I but, what you're saying. But listen, so you're it let me explain to you what, so let me explain to you. Let me, let me, let me, I don't know. Okay. And I'm violating my number one rule, which is talking over that. You give me an opportunity to answer all these questions, but it's not fair. But having said that, the one thing that the body would do for this investigation is, well, it's one of two things. It would either confirm or refute your whole story. And so, sir, you can't take that into the body. You know you can't, Mr. Williams. You can't do it. Because it will prove that all of this, from soup to the side of the road, is a lie. Okay. So then, let, I'm going to finish this up because I'm, I'm pretty much, you know, you, you leave the mother of your child on the side of this road that you have no idea where it is, even though you sat there for two hours, and you take her car and you do what with it? What do you do? I brought it back to her. Right. What were you trying to do there? I just wanted to be done with her and that evening, mm -hmm. and just oh, I didn't want anything else to do. Well, you wanted the cops. Yeah, you wanted to be done. You were done. This whole thing was a major inconvenience for you, wasn't it? This is all about you. This is all about how inconvenienced you were by her. No, it's just all about the fact that I didn't know what was going on. I don't know what this thing is. I don't know how it came to be that she was like that. There's some good I defenses. Want to, I want to be, I want to be. I There's some good defenses do. at law. There's some good defenses like self-defense or insanity or alibi or what. No, I know. But, but I just wanted this over and I didn't know what to do. Not so good. But anyways, you park her car in front of her house because that's where you want them to find it. Correct? That's her home. Right. But that's her home. As far as I know, that's where she lives. Well, look in the vicinity of her, well, did I just say the fact, in the area of her trailer, right? You parked it there because, and, and her purse was in the car, right? Is it, was her purse in the car? And her wallet, or no? No, just her purse? And you left it there because you wanted them to find her car there so that they would focus on that, right? But you 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 came up with this elaborate story you initially told them about how the gaps and she left and all of that stuff and that she drove home. So you had to have the car at her house in order for that story to make any sense. I didn't have that story. You make it seem like I thought all that what? why why didn't you just, why didn't you just take her car over to the public parking lot there off bridge? And again, I know you don't know where you took her body, but somewhere in that area in Hope Sound, and leave it in the parking lot and walk home from there. Why take it to her house unless you're trying to mislead the cops in the investigation? If I took it to the public parking lot, wouldn't that be the same family? No, because it would just be there, and you would, you, you would, there would just be, where did she go? What, what happened to her? What you're saying is the same situation then. If I didn't leave her car wherever she was, then wherever I put the car, by your definition, it's just missing. But if you left it at the public parking lot, right? This is the public parking lot off a of bridge, right? And isn't that the road you went down when you when you um, you took the right? Was, it, was that the name of the road, Bridge Road? Or do you not know? I don't know. It's okay. a major intersection. Okay, so you get back to her house. It's somewhere around or where she's living with, with her brother in the vicinity at about 4.30 in the morning. 
So we're now about two hours after you, two plus hours after you left with the body, and you hump it back to your place, right? Yes, I just walk. Right. And why did you change your clothes? Because I wanted to make something different. I didn't want all that stuff on me or whatever. I just what's up? Anything. What's up? Just dust, dirt, all of that. I just wanted to well, make... how much dirt are you going to get on yourself taking a dead body out of the back of your car laying it on the road? I don't know. I just wanted to not... I mean, you get dirt on you if you're digging a hole, right? I imagine you would, yes. You get dirt on your shoes, right? Yes. Where are those shoes? All that's trash. I threw it all away. Who throws away things? Do innocent people throw away things that might be evidence of a crime? Yes. If the backpack was trash, the clothes that weren't anything special, most of them were. Well, why bring it in? Because they're mostly just bed clothes. And they were the same shoes. They have extra shoes. Hey, man. Let's swap seats again. Do you hear what you're saying? Do you believe anybody in their right mind is going to believe you? Are, are you went through the effort of packing this bag, this bag, that, hold on, to, right? And then you got down here to Florida, and just coincidentally, after your wife dies and you dump her on the side of the road, your ex-wife, you decide you're going to throw away clothes. You see how ridiculous that is? There was more than just a pair of clothes in there, though. There was there was plenty of just other clothes. But some of the clothes and the shoes that you wore during your, this incident involving your ex-wife were some of the things you threw away, right? The next day, yes. Do you think they'd like to have that stuff? Sure. I'd like to see the shoes. I'd like to see what pants you were wearing. I'd like to see if there's any blood or any hair or any fiber or any dirt or plant matter on those things. You know why I'd like to see that stuff? Yes. You know why? I want to see it for the same reason you threw it away. It's evidence. So you destroy evidence as well. So you lie and you destroy evidence. Now, swap seats. What do you think about that? I think you're putting words in my mouth again. What I told you to tell me at any point in time about putting words in your mouth. You're saying I destroyed evidence. I didn't destroy it. I got rid of clothes. I didn't want anything to do with it anymore. I didn't want anything to do with it at night. I didn't want anything. All of it was completely foobar from the get-go. I didn't know what any of that was supposed to be about or how it even came to be that way. It all just spiraled out of control. I never touched her. I never put a hand on her. What foobar? Sorry, it's a military term. Um, fucked up beyond all repair. Alright. You fucked this thing up beyond all repair? The whole evening was. I didn't know what to do at any point in time because all I thought was I am scared and this all looks bad. At every point, it all looked bad. There was never a point in time where I'm like, this is okay. It was all bad. Everything was bad. Everything. And then you made it better or worse by lying to the police? Worse. Worse. And you made it better or worse by not taking them to where the body is so they can confirm or refute your story. You make it better or worse for you? It's only Hold on. because I can't okay. tell you where that is. Okay. Okay. I don't know where that is. And I know you feel like I should, and I should know this, but I don't. I don't okay. know. All right. And, and you make it better or worse by throwing away the clothes you're wearing during this entire episode. Is it better or worse? Worse. Okay. And so there's no question that the guy we see on the video, what were you wearing? You have the backpack? Dark backpack, right? It's an old it didn't look like a kid's high school backpack. It looked different. It's an old military bag. I had it for many trips. So it's like one of them big ass, what do they call them in the military? It's just a bag. I don't know. It's a backpack I've used for many different deployments and, and trips I've gone on. It's right. just a big bag. I use it to pack clothes. In Kept it all use. these years. Yeah, it was old, but I still had it, yes. And threw it away the day your ex wife was missing, but, right? Well, because of all the junk that was in it, yes. Right. Already falling apart water, anyway. water bottle with coffee bars in there, too? Yes. Okay. Um, when and where did you change out of the... Did, did, did all of this transpire, the two hours in the in your ex-wife's car? Did all of this transpire while you were wearing the clothes that we saw on the gas station video? Yes. Okay. And so it's those clothes and the shoes that you are wearing that went in the backpack that you disposed of, right? Yes, all of those are in the backpack. When did you do? When did you change? After I dropped off her car at home. Okay. 
Like, did you go on the bushes and change your clothes or what? Uh, there was a, there was a small structure. Okay. So, we know we got the big, dark backpack. It's not like a kid, it's like a, what do you call it, a rucksack or whatever you people call in the military? It's just a backpack. Okay. Rock, so what, 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 what are you wearing? What else are you wearing? I have an old hat and some gray sweatpants. What kind of a shirt? Just, I don't know, it's a shirt. I don't remember the shirt. Dark, light. I don't remember the shirt. Okay. And then, so, all of those video cameras that they showed you along US-1, is that how you came back? How did you come back? Walk down US-1 or what? Yes? Yes. You walk down US-1? Yes. Okay. And another way to get back to the home. Okay. And so at four some odd in the morning, as these cameras pick you up, they're picking you up, coming back with your backpack and whatever you're wearing from where you dump Twitch's car off, right? Drop it off their home, yes. Okay. And then you, this is Wednesday morning-ish, and you leave to go back to Raleigh when? That evening. You left out that evening? The same. But that was already planned. No, I know. Even though you had the place booked for five days, but I understand money being as important as it is to you, um, that five days, um, you, you got it for cheaper than if you had paid it to 100 or whatever earlier. Right? What are we talking about, right? Yes, it was a okay. good deal. I got it for $60. Right. Bucks. I never planned to save the full week. All right, so just so I'm, I'm clear that this is this is... This is your story and you're sticking to it. Uh, I mean, I just don't want, I'm just don't want to hear another story later or some other day. Is there anything? This is your opportunity to tell us anything that you think is important that we haven't asked you. Is there anything you can think of? I, you got to speak up because we're trying to get this recorded. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Jesus. Who is being out and about with your wife's ex wife's body in the backseat of her car? No, Jesus. And how old was she at the time? She's 72. Okay. And this is, this is the same child you were criticizing Bishop for for letting her play in the waves. And you left her home alone. She was asleep. What would happen if she woke up? Oh, yeah. didn't, didn't care. I didn't care. Of course I didn't care about my daughter. Okay. So just so we're clear for the record, you this is this is it. It's a laptop, gasket, third trip. Off to the dead end road, right? I didn't know what the road is. I didn't know if it's dead or not. The, the, the dirt road. And did she, where is her phone in her wallet? That was with her. Okay. Did you turn it back on when you left it with her? No, I just, just left the things with her. You don't want to mess with her again? I just left it with her. So we could have turned it on and then that way we could have found her. We could have pinged her phone we thought we'd have found her. And if she's alive, maybe we could have saved her life. It's never an occurrence to get turned right. on. I just left her phone with her. All I thought was it's her phone, she can call, she has her wallet, she needs money. Or ID or whatever, it's herself. There you go. Like, it never occurred to you to do anything to, to, to save her life. That's what you didn't saying. know what to do to save her life. Yeah. Okay. No, you know why we came up yesterday? There's no way how you were going to leave the state with that baby.
Uh, listen, I wanted, I wanted to kind of talk to you about what's going on with this, okay? And I've been involved with this case from the beginning, okay? And I've seen everything that we have. I've seen all the interviews. And at this point, I know we've come in and we talk to you over and over and over again. We've talked to you in Rolling. We've talked to you here. And we've always talked about the past. What happened that night? What happened that night? What happened that night? What I want to do is I want to kind of talk to you about the future where we're going from here. Okay. Now, I'm, you, you've already heard about all the stuff that we got. I mean, there's no question about what happened that night. We know that it's more than you're telling us. We know that you were involved with with her death. We know that. Okay. So the question is not what happened or anything like that. What we need to understand is going forward. Okay. There's going to be a trial. Okay. There's going to be uh, press. There's going to be everybody looking at this. You've seen how these things they get huge. The media gets involved, and everybody's going to have an opinion about what happened, and everybody's going to have an opinion about you and your relationship and what kind of person you are. Okay. And the thing that that we're trying to do here is, I, I mean, I talked to you earlier. You're a nice guy. I like you. I mean, I think we could be friends, you know, in different circumstances. But here's the thing. You know, there's going to be two narratives going forward, okay? And what I want to do is try to give you the opportunity to kind of tell me more about what narrative actually happened, okay? So what, what we're looking at is, you know, there, there's the one option, okay? And that's the option that you were kind of getting from earlier when, when Tom was in here, which is, you know, you, you planned this? You came down here with the intent purpose to, to hurt Trisha? That you were going to, that you planned to ditch your car here in some calculated way, and that you planned to go put her in a certain place that she, nobody could find her, and all that kind of stuff. And and that sounds pretty bad, right? I mean, that's I mean you wouldn't agree with that, okay? Yeah. Now the the other alternative is that, and like I said, we, we know what happened. We know that you know that something beyond what you were telling us happened in the house. But I think the more likely story is having seen, I mean, trust me, I've been here, you haven't seen me before involved in this, but I've seen you, okay? I've done a lot of research in your background, and I know what it was like with Trisha. I know what kind of stuff you went through. I know she had a wild streak when she was younger. I know what she did. And she came after you, you know, in that, that domestic thing that happened before. I know how that started, okay? I, we've seen the reports. We know it all happened. We know she went back and said, no, the whole thing was made up because she started it, okay? What I think is more to me, having known you, having known the background of everything between you and her, everybody's going to have their own opinion. But I, I can see that I think probably what happened was something more like she started something that night. Okay? And, uh, you know, having known what her background was, having known how she treats you, okay, I've seen text messages. I've seen how, what she says to you. Okay, I know what kind of stuff she she's always bitching you about stuff. I get that. I see that. Okay, so I can see how that would kind of go that direction that night. All right. So what I want to do is try to try to set the set the stage so that you can actually tell the narrative about what actually happened, which is not that you planned all this. Okay, not that you planned down here to come down here and kill her and send her out into the woods like some sort of mass murderer. I mean, really? I mean, like, like you're going to chop her up into little bits or something like that? I mean, that, that seems kind of ridiculous, okay? It seems far-fetched, like you said, okay? And I don't think you planned all this. I don't think you're capable of that, okay? I think what happens is sometimes things just get out of hand, okay? You agree with that? Sometimes, you know, people start doing something, and, and they cause something to happen, okay? And I'm not saying you wanted this to happen, all right? But I know you were there when it happened, okay? What we want to understand is what actually happened that night, okay? And I know you were there, and I know I don't believe it was your fault, okay? So what I imagine something to be, you know, is maybe you guys got in an argument. Maybe it was over the computer. Maybe it was over the gas. Maybe it was over whatever, okay? Any little nitpicky thing that she's going to get on you about, which she always did. I get that, okay? And things got heated. Okay, you're down here to try to see your daughter. Okay, you're a good dad. You're trying to be down here to spend time with 
with somebody that you care about, your daughter. And Trish is here again, you know, and unfortunately, I'm sure that doesn't make you feel that good. She's, spent, she's trying to spend time with your daughter, okay? It's okay. But, but it's, you know, and Trisha came over, but then things started getting kind of ugly, okay? And I'm sure she started it. And you didn't want to get involved in that, okay? But if she starts pushing things, she's not going to back up. She, she's, she's unrelenting, okay? I've seen this, okay? I've seen the history. I've seen the background of how this works, okay? So what, what I could see happening is that maybe she came at you and, I mean, just defending yourself, she falls. Maybe um, you, you didn't realize how hard you pushed her out of the way, but you're just trying to defend yourself. You see what I'm saying? I'm not saying that you tried to hurt her, but I'm saying that it's clear that something happened there and that resulted in Trisha getting injured to the point where she, where she was deceased. Okay? And then beyond that, I can see you know, putting myself in your shoes for a minute. Okay? I see that you're, you're a hard worker. Okay? You've, you've rose through the ranks. You're in the Air Force. You've been there, what, 11, 12 years, you said? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a long time. That's a career. You've devoted your life to, to that career, to this country. Okay? You've got your daughter to think about. Okay? Something happened. It's Trisha's own fault. Now she's gone. I mean, there's nothing you can do about that. But what do you People aren't going to believe that, that you weren't, you know, planning to do this. People aren't going to believe that you weren't intending to hurt her in some way. But sometimes shit just happens. And now here it is. So now you've got to make a choice. Okay, do you call the cops and roll the dice that we're going to believe your story? Or do you try to do the, you, you go into a little bit of panic mode. And trust me, if I was in the same, I don't know what I would have done. Okay, I couldn't even imagine being in that position. But I can understand going into that, that panic mode of, holy shit, what do I need to do now? And so your first plan, I mean, you told us that your plan was that you were just going to take her back to the house and you were going to leave her there, which I understand because she's going to be back by her house and people are going to find her and, you know, then maybe, maybe, they'll, maybe they'll look otherwhere, other places, you know what I mean? And, and I understand that, okay? And that's what you told us. That was, that was kind of your first thought. But that's probably when you saw that Joshua was still home. So... And, and now you're not going to run the risk of him coming out when, when this is all going on because, I mean, that's, that's not going to look well for you at all, right? I mean, if Joshua comes out and sees all this, he's not going to understand. He's obviously going to think that you planned this and did this intentionally. So, so now we're going to go back to the house, okay? And, of course, Trisha, being the way she is, there's no gas in the car. Typical Trisha. And I keep it. I mean, come on. I mean, how, how much... How hard is it to go fill up a gas tank? I mean, really? It's not that hard. It's not that hard. You got to think ahead about this type of stuff. I never let my gas, my gas tank go below a quarter of a tank. That's me, you know? But I pay attention to that stuff. My wife should run that gas tank out all the time. And the next thing you know, I got to go out in the middle of the night because I got to run and get groceries or something. I'm also getting gas because she didn't think ahead about it. Okay. So, so now, well, obviously, you can't go to the gas tank, the gas station in her car because she's in the car, well, that's, that's not going to look good, right? So you head back to the house, and you, the only thing you can think of is, is hopefully somebody has some gas there, right? And we, we confirmed that. We talked to everybody. And yeah, you did. You tried to get some gas at the house. And then you decided that you just have to go get gas, but now you're going to take your own car, obviously, because you don't want to get her car. So, I mean, that's all confirmed, and that, and that makes perfect sense. Okay. So... And then, now you're going to have to go to plan B, which is, unfortunately, you're going to have to take her somewhere else because you can't risk somebody seeing you with, with her in the car, right? Because that's going to be too hard to explain. And it is. And now we're in this position. It's very difficult to explain, and I get that. But what we need to do is, is moving forward. I mean, it's, it's and like I said, it's, it's, it's these two narratives, okay? We need to understand now what happened because we we're going to write reports about this so this is all on video this is all going to go forward into this trial this is inevitable we, i can't change this at this point this is a role this is a boulder rolling down a hill okay 
The only thing I can do is alter the course slightly. And the only thing that I can do at this point, and like I said, I think you're a good guy. I've talked to you. You're a nice guy. Okay? I don't think that you were a cold-blooded killer who came down here with the explicit intention to murder her. Okay? I don't think that's the case. Okay? But right now, I, I can't say otherwise. I can't say that there was an accident because you're not telling us something other than that. Okay? We have all this evidence. And then we also have things that are not consistent, okay? We're having inconsistencies where there's still, even after all of this, there's still holes in the story that we can prove through evidence that what you're telling us is not completely true. And that continues to make it look like even having understanding that this, this has happened and it was out of your control and we know what happened, you're still trying to tell us little lies about what happened so that it makes you look better. And unfortunately, that's, that's not going to help you because any lie at this point is going to make you look bad. And it's going to tip that boulder right back to everybody think, oh, well, he's a liar. He's a cold-blooded murderer. He came down here to kill her. And they're going to put you on, you know, like these poachers or all these, you know, serial killers and stuff like that. That's not where you need to be, okay? Sometimes people just make mistakes. Sometimes accidents happen. Sometimes things get out of control. And that's understandable, but you have to tell us that story. We have to understand what happened so that we can tell that story. Because once, I, once we're done here, we don't make any more recordings. We don't write more reports. Once I put in my report, whatever happened, that's, that's set in the stone because that's what you told me. Whatever your words are, that's what we, can, that's what we take to court. That's going forward, what you told us about what happened. That's what you told us. Uh, the truth was, okay? And if we come back and show that, hey, that's not the actual truth, then again, that just looks horrible for you. And that starts telling that other narrative. All right? So I think that you were there when she was injured and that she was injured in some way that was not a direct attack from you. But I think that you have more information about what actually happened to her. Because I know you were in the house with her when it happened. Is that true? No. I didn't really name. Okay. No. Listen, we, I know. And you tell me that. Okay? And you're using very specific language. So tell me, I'm not saying that you laid a hand on her, but I know that you were there when she was injured. So you need to explain to us how it was she, she became injured because, because this whole thing where you came back from the gas station and you just found her like that, I know that's not true. I, and I can prove that's not true. Okay? And I don't want that for you. I don't want you to be locked into the story where you're telling us a lie about how she became injured. Because if you lie about how she became injured to me right now, then that makes it look like you did it on purpose. Of course not. And, well, and that's not the story that I want to tell. Okay? And I want you to be able to tell the story about what actually happened and for the truth to get out there. The only thing that's going to help you at this point is the truth. And and I know that the truth is not that you came home and you found her after you went to go get gas for her. I know that's not the truth. Okay? And I need you to tell us the truth so that I can tell the actual truth when we go to court. Because that's what I'm here for. I'm here to find out the truth about what happened. I'm not, I'm not here to try you. I'm not a jury. I'm not a judge. I'm not a lawyer. Okay? I'm a detective. A detective's my sole job is to find the truth about what happened. Because once I'm done with my job, I can write the truth in my report, and I can be satisfied that I understand the entire truth. But if there's something that doesn't add up, if there's something that I know to be a lie, I have to keep digging at it, and I keep digging at it, and keep digging at it, and I have to bring that up in court, because they're going to ask me, is this the whole truth? Is this what actually happened? And I'm going to have to say, I have evidence contrary to that. I know that that's not what happened, and I know he's lying. Okay? But the only person who is in that house who can tell us what happened to Trisha is you tell us what happened. But if you don't tell us the truth about what happened, it just continues to make it look like you're lying to us to cover up something more sinister, for lack of a better word. Like, you intended this to happen, and now you're covering up. And I don't want that to be the story. It's not the story. And I know. And that's why I want you to have this opportunity to tell me the, the truth about how she became injured, how, that, how Trisha lost her life. Yeah, you, you, you do. You do. You do. Okay? And I know that you were in the house. Like I said, 
I can, I can prove. But I didn't do anything to her. I, I, you're not, you're not hearing me. Okay, you're not hearing me. Okay, I'm not saying that you did anything to her on purpose. I'm not saying that you hurt her. I'm not saying that you laid hands on her. Okay, but I do know that you know what happened to her. I know that you know what happened to her. I know you were in. I know you were in the house. I know it. Okay, and I can prove that. And I don't want to have to get up on the court and, and on the on the jury in the in the sand and explain to the jury that even after giving me the opportunity to tell me the truth about what happened, to, to tell me the truth that you're not this cold blooded murderer who came down here to kill her. It, you can tell me that, but you continue to tell me a lie about what happened. You continue to tell me a lie about how you found her dead, how she came to be injured like that. You and I know I don't want that to be the last thing that we hear about this. I don't want the last thing that you're able to tell us is this lie about how she got hurt. Because that is the most important piece of this. There's no question that she was killed. There's no question that she was taken out into the, the woods. But the problem is that the narrative is, was that the actions of someone who was panicking? And a jury could yes. completely understand this? I did. I didn't know what to do. I but, don't, I don't so, plan to so explain it. I mean, I, how, I don't know what you do in these situations. And I know you didn't plan this. And that's exactly what I'm saying. That's why I'm trying to give you the opportunity to explain to us how it happened that it, because it was not planned. You did not no. attack her. You did no. not try no. to kill her or try to come down here to kill Never. her. But things happen. And I, we need to understand what it was that happened in that house before the whole gas thing. I know it happened before the gas thing. I know it, it happened before you went to the, this computer thing. I, I know that's not the truth. I can, I can prove that this is not the truth. I need to know the truth to, to be able to tell people that, that you're not a serial killer, that you're some psychopath, you have no remorse over killing the mother of your child, but you know that's what's going to be in the paper. You know that's what's going to change that. You can. You can change that. You can change that right now. No. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. I can't tell you anything other than what I've told you. No, you can tell me the truth. And that's the problem. And nothing, nothing, nothing makes it better. Nothing I say makes it better. It will. And it doesn't matter. Because there's a huge difference between we got an argument, it got physical, she started it, she got hurt. And that's that's, 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 that's any better. That's no, no better. Look, no, tell me the same scenario. That is She's miles. Still. That is miles better than I came down here with a backpack with a backpack full of tools, ready to kill her and drag her out with her lifeless body in the woods. You heard you heard the narrative that you told. You just, told you told us more I had a bag, I had clothes, yes. I had water, yeah, I had snacks. In there. Well, no. I'm saying you got the bag, and then after all this is done, all this messy business is finished. Now you get rid of that. That looks awful. That looks I like that looks like that. a murder bag. That looks like oh my gosh, she came down here with was. this bag. And I don't think it was. What? I think it was just a bag it, that they had with some stuff in it. Yes, that's but you literally need, what it was. But you need to explain. Stuff that I already had. But if that's the case, you need to explain the, how she got hurt. Okay. But, and I need to listen to me. I know. I know. This is my job. Okay. I know when I when the truth has come out, and I know when somebody's trying to dance around the truth, and I know when somebody's trying to skip over things. Okay. And I know that's what's happening here. And I don't blame you because it's scary. Because you don't want to have to think about what happened again. And because you think it's, it's going to make you look bad once we know actually what happened. But I'm telling you right now, whatever happened before, you know, I'm going to tell you right now, if you came down here with a murder bag and you planned on killing her and burying her out in the woods and hopefully we would never find her again, that's that's not gonna look good. Okay. okay. Stupid but I don't think that's I don't bury someone in the woods. I don't find that. That's why they do all the searching. And, and I don't think that was the plan. But the thing is that if if you leave that empty space for everybody to make up this story about what actually happened and why you were down here and what actually happened to Tricia and your intentions, you know that's what people are gonna come up with. 
and you know you know that's what everyone's going to say so you need to take take the opportunity now to set everybody straight to tell us what actually happened in the house and because sit here and tell you that she attacked me that's just another different story that you're just going to be like what's well, five different stories you're telling now and that doesn't help me either so what do you want me to tell you what do you want me to tell you now? i want you to tell me the because truth i'm telling you i didn't hurt this woman okay I never did anything to injure her or hurt her my only mistake is I didn't, I didn't just, I didn't just accept that this is the situation and call 911. That's what I should have done. Did, did she I didn't take her to the hospital. I should have just did that. Instead, I just panicked and I just started to, I started to get away from it all. So I wanted, I just wanted nothing to do with all that. But you panicked. That's not me. And I just panicked. You panicked because of what happened because you thought it would come back on you. Because it did, it does. Like in the past, even I didn't do anything to her. But, but people, of how it but here's the thing: people fall down all the time. People get hurt, okay? It's not uncommon, okay? And that, and we can we can find that out. That's that's not something that's difficult to determine, okay? There's people that go to a lot of school and they get paid a lot of money to figure out exactly what happened to somebody, okay? And I know you don't believe that, and I know you, you were panicking. I get that, but I know that what you're telling us about coming back from the gas station, I know that's a lie. I know that's a lie, and I can prove that's a lie. And I don't want that to be the last lie that you tell us. I need you to tell us tell the truth. Else because I don't know anything else to tell you. You do. And, and I know, I know you do. Else, it's another story. And no matter what I tell you, it's not going to be the truth according to you. So yeah. what do you want me to tell you? Here's, the, here's the thing about the stories, okay? Every time you tell us some version of what happened, it gets closer to the truth. And I appreciate that because you, then I say, oh, yeah, she attacked me. You come back in here like, okay, so you attacked her. Like, no, that's not what I said. So then you're just going to have me going down this rabbit hole of different stories now. I don't want that either. Right? I don't, like I told you, okay, I, I can prove, I can prove one thing, okay? I can prove that you were at the house with Trisha when she was injured. I can prove that. So the question lies with you as to, you're the only one who was there with her. Like I said, you're the only person who can tell us what happened. So this is your opportunity to tell us what happened in the house, before you left because that's when I know she was injured and I can prove that what I need to know is what happened in the house because I know what you're telling me is a lie and I can prove that but if you stick with that story and I can prove that it's a lie everyone's going to assume the worst then you assume the worst so, if, I, if I sit here and say yeah we argue she attacked me then they're just going to assume okay you being the bigger stronger person you hit her or you did something to her or you you in some way hurt her and that I never ever would do I'm, that. I'm not asking you. I'm didn't not come asking you to make up a story. Murder bag. I didn't come down here with some dubious plan. See, I didn't. Have, exactly. I'm not that kind of person. And that's and that's what I'm saying is that you're not that type of person. But by continuing to lie to us about what happened and when it happened, you're opening that door for everyone to assume it, and you know everyone's going to assume it. They already. I do. don't. They I don't assume that. Before. If I thought that was the case, I wouldn't be in here talking to you right now. Because if I thought you had this murder bag and you came down here with the express intent to kill Trisha, no, I'd be like, you know what? Never. There's no sense in talking to this guy. He's a psychopath. No. And he's, and he's, he's, not, even, he's, he's not worth anybody's time. That's why you're divorced. But I'm not going to murder the woman. But I'm not going to. That's, that's why I want to come in here and talk to you and try to give you the opportunity to set the record straight and tell us the truth about what happened with Trisha. Because I know what you're telling us right now is a lie. And I don't want you to be stuck in this lie. Because once I write it in my report, it's done. This is what Stephen told us, and that's it. But I can prove that's not true. That's not how I want to end this report. Because everybody wants to know what happened to Trisha. If Trisha had an accident, if Trisha came at you when she fell. She clearly had an accident. I didn't do anything so, to her. I so what, I didn't do so what happened? I never hurt her. I never I didn't push her. I didn't... Shove her. I didn't do anything to that woman. So she what? Hurt her. So what happened? I didn't do anything. I'm not saying you did anything. I'm asking. Not. That's not the question I'm asking. The question is, what happened? Because, like I said, I know you were in the house when it happened. I know you were there. I can prove that you were there. And if you don't tell me the truth about what happened now, then you're going to have to forever live with the fact that you lied about it, and then it's going to come out in court that. We know he was in the house, and he's lying about it, and that looks awful. That looks like you knew exactly what you were doing, that you need to cover this up. 
because what you did was so horrible that nobody would understand. Yeah, I don't think that's the case. I don't think that's the case at all. Then why even go with that if you know that's not the case? I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that's what I think. I'm telling you, you know that's what everybody else is going to think. You know that once this thing gets on CNN and Fox News, they're going to put they're going to put your they're going to put your mugshot up there. And you leave that void. You leave that void where they can tell whatever story they want. They're going to tell whatever story, regardless of what I tell them. Not it doesn't. The news, the news, the news is not going to lie about something. They won't because they can get in big trouble. If if we have evidence that you said that you know, she attacked you and that it was an accident or something like that, whatever the narrative is that you tell us, and we can say, you know what, this is, this is the closest thing that we can get to the truth. We believe this to be the closest thing to the truth. Because you can never find the absolute truth. It's very, very difficult, okay? But the thing is that if we're sitting here and we can know that you're lying to us, that leaves this giant gaping hole where anybody can put whatever they want in that. Because a lie is a lie. It's not the truth. If we know, well, that's not the truth, what goes there? What fills in that spot? That's, I don't think you did. I don't think you did. I didn't have a murder bag. I don't think you did. I don't think, but you know, you know it looks like that. And it looks bad. That's why I panicked from the get-go, because it looked so bad. But you need to take this opportunity to tell me the truth. Because I, I don't want you to have to live with the fact that you lied to us about this whole gas thing and come back and fight. There's no, there's no point. There is a point. Now. There is a point. Because this is a huge difference. Because, because someday in the not too distant future, you're going to not, not, don't worry about the media. Don't worry about what your friends and family are going to think. Don't worry about all this stuff. Really not. You're going to have a jury. That's my deciding your I fate. I feel like no matter what I tell you, it's not going to make no. a difference with them. It's going to make a huge difference. I tell you another story of we had an argument and fought, and then they're going to be like, what happened to the other two, three stories he told? Why wasn't this? That's so because weird. you were scared. And I'm I scared. understand you're scared. Now, I was scared then. I'm scared now. You've been scared throughout this entire thing. Your actions look like somebody who's planned this and look like somebody came down here to murder But yes, I can see they're actually the actions looks like. of and someone who was scared. But you need to explain to them that you didn't just come home and you saw that she fell down and you got scared. That's that that doesn't make sense to a jury. They're not that's they're not gonna buy this. They're not gonna believe you. I don't and they're not gonna buy anything. They're gonna believe the truth. They're gonna believe the truth. All of it from the get go was just it's unbelievable. All of it from the get go was one of those like I'm living a nightmare. I'm living some shitty lifetime movie special is what I'm living and it's Bullshit! Because I would never hurt that woman. I would never. So tell us. So tell us what actually happened in the house. No. What actually happened in the house? You need you. The only way that we're going to be able to move forward from this is for you to, to. to because I'm, I'm telling you, I'm being straight up with you. I'm being honest with you. Okay. I've done this investigation. I have all this forensic evidence. Okay. We have a bunch of people who have gone through all of this forensic evidence, and we can see. What you're telling us the truth about and what you're not telling us the truth about. And I can tell you right now, the biggest glaring lie is that I know that you're lying about that she she was already on the ground when you came home. I know that's not true. I know that's not true. And I can prove that in a court of law to be not true. So you have to take this opportunity. I'm giving you this huge clue. Hey, you need to tell us what actually happened here. Because if I can prove that you're lying, now you're, you're going to leave it in the hands of a jury, of a bunch of people who have been watching the news about what they talk about you, and then you're going to let them decide and fill in that hole about what happened to Trisha. You think they're just going to say, oh, yeah, she must have just fallen down and bumped her head. You think that's what they're going to think? No. 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 Because you're not telling them what actually happened. You're not telling me what actually happened. I just, I just feel like if I do, then it's just another story. It's just another story. Of it's, what it's, it's another version. Everything, of what everything is a story. Yes. Everything, everybody yes. has their own. Goes into like the docket file of well, we can't believe the word this guy said no. now because no. you lied because in the beginning, you lied in the middle, and now you're probably still lying in the end. No, because we need to understand. Because I, I don't want to leave you here hanging out here with this lie, this glaring lie that I know is not is not the truth. Because 
if you take this opportunity to talk to me. I will listen to you. I will listen. I will believe your truth. It doesn't matter. Okay. You believe me? It does. No, it doesn't. Who do you think writes this report? <laughs> Who do you think has to defile all this stuff to the state attorney? I understand. Myself, the other detectives. That's, we have to listen to you. That's my job. Have a mind made up no. If I had, like I said, if I had my mind made up, I came here with some murder. Back if I had my mind made up, I would not be in here talking to you right now. Because I don't believe, I talked to you earlier. We had a good conversation about the Air Force and all the cool stuff that you've done, the cool places you've been. Yeah. You're a good guy, okay? I think you're a nice guy. I don't think you're this cold-blooded murderer, okay? But you're not giving us the opportunity to tell the story that actually happened. I know you do. I know you do. But with Trisha, with Trisha, things always go sideways with her. You try to do the right thing with her, and then she's off cheating on you with some other dude. You try to do the right thing with her, and then she's pushing your buttons up against the wall with this key thing, and she gets you in trouble. And then next thing I know, I saw that she was she's talking to your your commanding officer's wife or something about you being with this girlfriend. I saw all this stuff. She's always pushing your buttons. She's always... All I'm just trying to do is... And you are trying to do the right thing. Try to be a good okay. person. And then here it is. You're trying to be a good person. And it's still not working. And she not comes in. Work. And here she comes. I have a kid. Okay? Not that is a stressful thing never to have to deal with, deal with a kid. And in the middle of the night, who wants their mommy, and they will not take no for an answer. She would have. That's stressful. And I, I just felt like, that would, like, who am I to deny you your mommy? That would push anybody's buttons. That would put anybody on edge. I trust you, I've been there. Sometimes my kids start screaming, I don't want my mommy, I don't want my mommy. And it's like, upset with my daughter. I don't know. I, just said, I, don't, get ups, I don't get upset with her. Honestly, honestly it, it makes me feel a little upset. At myself, because why am I not good enough for my, well, my own I'm daughter? Not, you know? I'm not mad enough, and I know that. I wish I could be there more, but I, I can't. Just the circumstances, I, I can't change that. You know how often I can be there, so I just do what I can. But no, I'm not upset that she wants her mother. No, and, and I get that, and I get that. And so you try to be the again. You're trying to be the nice guy. You're trying to do the right thing for for your daughter now. All the time, she wants her mommy. You know what? You don't really like Trisha. You don't want to see her in the middle of the night. You don't want her to come back over. But you know what? You will make that sacrifice for your daughter. Of course I would. And then when she shows up, she's probably got an attitude. What, what, I mean, what's her deal? I'll never know what her deal is. She always has her own agendas. I don't, I just try to ignore them. I just, I just pretend that whatever she says is just take it as a grain of salt and move on. And, and I know she's got, I don't feed into it. I don't, I don't ask questions. I don't answer things. I just, I just smile and nod kind of thing. But I sometimes she won't she won't take that. Well no, that's just her first And time. she's gonna keep pushing. Because well, she's got she's, she's like got to end the conversation. And she's she gotta get to some resolution. And I let her. And I she's gonna keep prodding and poking about whatever the stupid thing is that she's upset about. Okay? And I get that. Okay? We we all understand that. We've all been there. Okay. So and, and I understand how this the, the kind of the atmosphere of that night. I, I can't, I can't blame you, okay, for panicking after all of this. Okay, but you got, but Stephen, Stephen, but, I, but I want to tell you right now, okay. You need some guidance sometimes. You weren't sure what to do. I can tell you right now, the right thing to do is to tell us what actually happened. It is. It's gonna. It's. It's going to help you enormously. It's. It's. I, I know you think that the truth is gonna is gonna make it look so much worse. Okay. But it. I can tell you right now, the truth is never anywhere near as bad as what people will believe if you let them come up with their own story. I don't believe I hated her. I never hated her. I didn't so tell me, I didn't hate her. So I tell me that story. Tell me what happened. Tell me what happened so that I can I can tell you. And, but it was, and you tried, and I know you did. Even after she was off with this other dude, you, you brought the family back together. You had a child with her to try to create this happy family. Even though you didn't really want to, but you you did. You tried so hard. Okay, and I get that. And I get that. And I appreciate that. I think you're a good guy. You're a family man. You're trying. You're trying to do the best that you can. Okay? You got a, you got a career. 
okay, you provide, you're a good guy. I mean, especially, you know, there's a lot of people that, that you know, they don't even, they don't even try. They abandon their kids, they, they don't get a job, they're out drinking, doing drugs, all kinds of shit. But you're, you're not that guy. Be the right, just do the right thing and be a good person and try to be a good father from a distance, I guess. I, and you did, and you were doing a good job, okay? But sometimes people throw monkey wrenches into your plans, okay? And you're trying to do the best that you can. You're trying, and I can see that. And I, like I said, I've seen all your guys' communication, all your text messages and how you talk to each other, and she was she was trying you. I mean, she would, I mean, you wanted to talk to your daughter. You wanted to be there for your, because you don't want to just abandon your child. No, you don't no. want her to not have a, uh, have a father. You're to doing a good job. As best as I could. You and know, so, I know, like, because of the military and her living in Florida, I can't always be there, but yeah, I'll try to be there as much as I can. And that's why that night, you gave in and you said yes. I know, I have a daughter. Daughters always get what they want, no matter what. They always get what they want, no matter if you don't want it or not. She wanted mommy. She's getting mommy, yeah. even though you didn't want that. So I know that your plan was not. I mean, you, I mean, how ridiculous is that? You plan to have a sick child. You plan to have your child call for the mother in the middle of the night. Plan to take a stupid trip to the but hospital. But people are no. going to believe that if you let them. They're going to believe you. Plan that? you so you plan for your child to be sick in the so, middle of the night. So I know you it's think that the truth is going to sound worse, but you know it's not. You know it's not going to sound worse. You know it can't be worse than this narrative that people are creating about you. It's only that people are already saying everything this. Everything else already. I've already told too many different freaking versions. You told you told versions because you panicked. Because you were scared. People can understand that. Scared. People can understand that. But at a certain point, you have to realize because you're afraid. You're afraid that you're going to get prison for caught. You're going to get blamed. You're going to get. You're going to get in trouble, but I can tell you right now, we're there. We're there. Okay, you're you're here with us, not be, because of what happened, and we need to understand the truth about what happened, because I know you're scared. I know you're scared about what's going to happen in the future. But before you were panicking because you didn't want anybody to know you were involved. You didn't want anybody to know you were there. You wanted it to go away. Oh, that wanted. that is a normal human response. That's what anybody would do in that situation. That you're panicking. You're panicking. That's that's a that's a it's a reasonable that's a reasonable thought process that people can understand. But what we can't get past is you continuing to, to lie about what happened. And I can't let you continue to lie about what happened. I need you to tell me the truth about what happened. I know you were there. I want to give you the opportunity to tell me what happened. I know you didn't, but you, you, you've got you've got to clear this off. Yeah, I can see this is this is not something you can carry around. It's 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 not something that's gonna, you can weigh that, weigh you down for the rest of your life. Well, it's so many times to just say the truth or talk to a counselor, and I don't even know what I would tell them. I don't even know how to tell. Them. I don't know, and and it's impossible for somebody who's outside to understand sometimes. But you you got to let us know the truth about what happened, so that you can move past this for yourself. You got you got to wait, get this weight off of your shoulders because it's going to destroy you, and you can't you can't let that happen to yourself. You you've regardless of what happens from here, you still have a daughter. You are still a father. You still have somebody you're responsible for. Okay, and you can't you. In, this point, in one point way, point I can't. I, no, that's not true. It's and and, and 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 don't think that's the truth. Okay, I can't guarantee you what's going to happen. Okay, I, it's not up to me. But what I can do is I can tell you that we need to know the truth. The truth about what happened. That everyone, the families, they need to know what happened because you cannot let everyone else make a some story. Do you want her to believe these stories that people are going to spin about you because you continue to lie to us about what happened that night? I know you were there. 
I know you know the truth. You need to tell us so that we can just put a pin in this and say, now we know the truth. It does. It does. It's going to. Because, because it, cannot, it cannot get worse than what people make up. I tell you that. I, you would not believe people's imagination. Well, you would. But, I mean, people's imaginations will run wild, and they will come up with the most horrific things. I don't even know where it just just, I don't know. It just, just happened. Talk it just talk happened. to me about from midnight. I would never text her otherwise. Right. It was already late and she had already left. I would have never text her. And you're a good dentist. Just, so you wanted wanted. That's it. That's all I was trying to do was just be a good dad. Just okay, you want your mom? Fine. Like I'm not gonna deny you that, you know? Mm -hmm. So so I just come by, that's fine. And then, just, no, I never liked her around. I never liked being in a one-on-one -on -one situation with her because I could never predict her. I don't know the version of her I'm getting at that moment. And so, no, I never liked being in a one-on-one -on -one situation just right. because, just like now, there's only something my word or her word or whatever. <laughs> I can't change how things freaking look. Right. So, yeah, she came over. Talks about nonsense and bringing up child support and just more stupid stuff that I just, for the most part, tried to ignore. And then, yeah, there was a mix up with the check, but that's not my fault because you told me this was your address. So, yeah, that's where I mailed it to. And then she's telling me that's not the mailing address. It's just what my mind. I'm like, that's not my fault. If you told me you moved, I did the responsible thing and I made sure the check was going to go wherever you moved to if you're not at your mom's house. And then she's just going on and on and on. Now I owe her more money and back child support. And, just, and I'm just sitting here like, then I'll fix it. I'll send you another. I'll do something, but I don't have the money now. So just give me some time. Like, because that money, since you didn't get it on time, is already spent. I spent it to come here. And now I need a little more time to get it to you. And now she's talking about how she's going to go to court and all this other stuff. And it's my fault. And I'm just like, this isn't even my fault. Like, you told me you moved, so I adjusted it. Like, just calm down. Like, this isn't even that serious. This is an easily rectifiable, why are you getting all out of hand about this, you know? Right. And, and, and yeah, I know I didn't go through the court to pay child support, but every time I tried, it was just, she just stonewalled me. It's like, I don't want to do that because I paid money to send you money, which is stupid. I was like, just let me have your account information, just, a, just the account number, and I'll direct deposit it, and this will never happen. And no, that was, that's not going to work, and we can't do that. You owe me all this money, and then she's going to go to court and make me pay you all the other money from the divorce that I already took over ten thousand, like twenty-seven thousand dollars in debt that I have to pay back in eighteen months, and then if I don't pay all that back, I got another six thousand dollars I got to pay as far as back child support, and now she's trying to say I'm going to have to pay all that back, and then she just gets on my face about it, and I'm like, what? Why are you so mad right now? Like, I, is it because I called you this late? It just, it's just completely got out of hand. And then there's the whole pointing and the, the, I just, it just all went bad. It just, so fast, she just went from zero to a hundred, and I'm trying to understand, like, what just happened? Like, you were just here earlier. Everything was fine. You left. I don't We're arguing about something that I'm sitting here thinking this is unbelievably trivial and this can be fixed. I can fix this by the first. Just give me time and I'll make sure you get the money or I'll make it in two separate payments or whatever you need me to do. And it's just not, it's just not good. It's not going to work. None of this works. And she eventually falls asleep anyway, but she's still like arguing with me over in the, the, the foyer area. And I'm just like, D please just leave then, just go. No, I'm not leaving until we fix this. Like, just, just get out. Like, I don't, I don't know what you want from me, Trisha. I don't have any money for you. I don't have any cash for you. I can't give you anything right now. I spent the little money I had, which is why I drove here fly, I didn't get a rental car like I normally do, I'm not in a hotel, well, I don't want to do the hotel thing, but I don't have money, like, mm -hmm. I just, I paid so much money to the debt, that I don't have any more money, okay, I just don't, I am, like, pretty much strapped when it comes to cash, but paycheck to paycheck, and even then, I'm not making it right now, and it's just, it's just, it doesn't matter, 
You owe me money. You need to pay your debts. This is always your fault. You're always spending more money. And it's just on and on and on to the point where now I'm just trying to like walk away. Now I can't walk away because you're circling me and like, you're jumping in front of my face. And you just, it, it just got so aggressive. And I'm just trying to back away and de-escalate. And I can't even leave the house now. You know, I don't want to push you. I don't want to touch you. I don't want to anything with you because all I'm having, I'm just thinking about flashbacks of before when you just blew all this, this shit up for no reason and then now I'm getting arrested but only after the fact did you go and you know say that it wasn't my fault. No no one else knows that now. But only after the fact that I got arrested. All I'm thinking just just flashbacks. So I moved I go to push her away and then she gets really pissed about that. And then she gets even more aggressive and in my face and pushing me back and I'm like, Would you please just stop? Like I don't want I don't want this. I don't know what's going on. I don't know why you're so mad. I don't know if you if you took a freaking crazy pill all the way over here and that really pissed her off and uh, it just it just escalated and then I just moved her away and then she slipped and that's when she freaking fell and I'm like, oh shit. I asked her if she was okay. It was like a weird sound. She didn't say anything though. And then I freaking panicked and then I I just freaking panicked. Because I didn't read, I didn't try to hurt you. I just wanted you to stop being here in my face, yelling at me as I'm trying to back away. I'm trying to de-escalate. I don't want whatever this is. It's not. It's not that serious. I don't know why it's so serious about this money. It's always been so like, even throughout the divorce, every penny has just been so serious about her trying to get every dollar. Right. And I'm like, and now I made a mistake and I sent the check to the wrong address because I didn't know that wasn't a mailing address. And I, and I can't explain where it is, and I didn't even get it back in the mail until a week after that. And it, it just, it just went so fast. And then I pushed her, and then I didn't push, push. I was just trying to get her away. Just please stop yelling Some in my space. face. It's like, just, you know, like, if she was at that distance, fine. But she wasn't. She's just right here the face. whole time. And I'm like, please, just stop. And so I went to move her away, and she slipped, and she hit her head. And I didn't mean for that. That wasn't my freaking fault. I wasn't... And then all I'm thinking is, great, now I've pushed her and she's hurt her head and, and I'm done. I'm just, everything I've tried to do, everything I've tried to be is done because I made a mistake. I didn't even really even lose my cool. I just tried to move you away. I just did, I didn't want you to hurt yourself. It's <laughs> just trying and to de-escalate the situation because I couldn't get out. I didn't know where to go. I couldn't even just leave. Like all I wanted to do was just leave. I just wanted nothing to do with that. Do you know what she hit her head on? Was it the floor or? I don't know. It just she just fell, and then she just she wasn't responsive after that. And I didn't know what to do. <laughs> you know, I thought then I call the police now. She just had freaking pushed her, and I'm going to check. <laughs> <laughs> so so what were, what did you do next? And I tried. I I just tried to wake her. I tried to like snap her out of it and it just it just kept getting worse. Just she just wasn't responding. You know, she had she made weird breathing sounds and I'm thinking, oh shit, I'm going to jail. Like I'm going to jail for killing this woman that I never wanted to hurt. Never. I don't think you did. I never think wanted her to be her. I, I never wished ill on her. I tried to always do right by her, no matter what the situation. I just tried to do the right thing. And all I'm thinking is, I'm going to jail for, for trying not to hurt you. <laughs> and that's, I mean, and that's, that's exactly why I wanted you to tell me the truth. I just wanted it to, to stop. I just wanted it to go away. I just wanted to just go back. It is <laughs> okay. And 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 that I believe you. I believe everything that you just told me. Okay, Stephen. It doesn't make it matter. It does. It makes it makes a huge difference because that's that's what we need to do. We need to get to the truth about it. <laughs> now you know you know the next question I'm going to ask you. Okay. And I know you don't want to, but we need to know where know. Trisha is. I don't know, and the, uh, I, I really know. don't have a freaking clue where that was. I but just, I just, I just panicked, and I just drove. And I know, and, and I, know I went through a million and one scenarios in my head of what to do, and none of them were good. All of them just ended bad. 
I didn't, okay. I didn't pay attention to anything. I just drove, and as I drove, I just I didn't I didn't read any signs. I didn't I just drove, and I just tried to think of how to fix it. And I couldn't fix it. And it was just bad all around. And I'm just like, no matter what, I'm screwed. Like I am screwed, no matter what. I can't go back. I can't I can't go to the hospital now. If I do, how does that look? I don't even know what to do at this point. I'm just freaking out because I just. <laughs> Want any of this? I didn't want anything to do with any of that. I just want to be a good dad. I get it. I understand. <laughs> All right, and Stephen, I want to I want to help you do the best you can from here. Okay, and I know. Shit happens. It does. It does. It happens to good people. Okay? It doesn't make you a bad person. I don't know where she is, and I can't take you to where she but is, you, and I'm still screwed because I. We gotta try I to can't remember. Remember that. I don't know where that was. I just. Okay. It was just a random place. I have no idea where I well, was. Let me let me try to <laughs> let me just try to understand through the rest of the the evening. Okay. The, the the first the first that you said you went through several scenarios. I just started to figure out what I was gonna do. I didn't know what to do. I just panicked. The first just scenario fear and panic is all I had. Just panic and sheer fear because I just this is not what I know wanted what with my life. I didn't I just tried so hard to do so good and to fix the shit that was wrong and it was a uphill battle but I was fixing it it was getting fixed my life was getting better I had moved on I had my job I had my career I was happy with my girlfriend I just everything was fine I was so it was so fine so good <laughs> and it's, it's it's a horrible horrible accident that sometimes these time these types of things happen and they happen to good people and we got to try to get through to do the best that we can from here okay well, let me let me just understand the rest of the night. So you told us your first idea was to go take her in a car to her house, right? Take her home and just. But then you saw what Joshua was there. I just saw a vehicle. I didn't know whose vehicle that was. I just I just didn't know what to do, so I just kept okay. driving. Just well, kept is that is that when you went back because it was out of gas or low on gas? Yeah, I didn't know where to go after that, okay. and I didn't know what to do, and I should have just called the police then, I guess. But even then, I was like, well, now I've already left, so now what does this look like? Right, like, and it, it just snowballed. It just, it just it's so out of control, so fast, that no matter what I have to do, it just works. So try to try to help me, and I want to try to help you think through this. You went back, you got the gas, and then you put the gas in the car, okay? You went out of the neighborhood. Where did you go? No where you left? You, you went you went south. You turned drove. you turned right, right? Just went just turned the right, okay. and then it was just, just we, drove trying to think of what to do and where I know, to go and how, I know. how to make it right. And then every everything was wrong. Everything right. at that point was wrong. And but you, you, here's the thing, Stephen. I know that you. I know you don't think you remember, but I know you remember. If we can work through this, I think you can figure this out. Okay. I don't so just just place just work with me for a minute, okay? So you went, do you, you know where Bridge Road is, right? The main, it's, the main road? Yeah, it okay. to the beach. When you got to the, the bridge road that goes to the beach to the left, right? Yes. Did you turn right or did you go straight? I'm pretty sure I turned right, but it, everything I saw out there doesn't look like anything. It just, I don't remember anything that I saw out there. I just remember it was... Do you just, remember going under just, a bridge? I don't know. I just... I just spaced and I just drove and I just tried to think and clear my head and figure it out and what now and then I just realize that I'm screwed like I'm just okay. done there's nothing I can I'm just going to prison like screw so, it I'm going to prison no matter what I do at this point and it, it just so you drove for explain. you drove for a while right I just couldn't explain it and 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 I get that that's a lot to think about that's a lot to to carry around with you okay and this has got to have been tough for you these last couple weeks. <laughs> I wanted to tell, but I don't know how to tell it, and it's already so and that's, far past. That's no, so it's far it's past. never too late. <laughs> it's never too late, okay? And that's why I wanted to give you this opportunity because I want you to tell us the truth. I want you to have that opportunity. But I didn't hurt her. But, I didn't. I never. <laughs> here's here's what I need. To, we I we have so plan. so many people. So many people 
are, are looking for her and want to know where she is, okay? Will you, will you continue to work with us to try to figure out where she is? You won't? No. I know you, I know you don't think you know, but I, know I, I need know. you to give us, I need you to give us an honest effort to try to remember. It just, it just was, it was just dark. And what, it was a dark so you drove for a while. It was just dark. Let, was let, let, hold on, Steve, let me just, let me just talk through this a little bit, okay? So you drove for a while while you were thinking. Did you turn anywhere? Dan, I just, for a moment, I just spaced. I just, I just saw road, and I just drove. I didn't want to think. I didn't want anything. I just, it just was just zoned out. Okay. Just nothing. Just okay. So you don't, you don't just remember sheer fear and panic, and I just don't know what I should do. Or okay, when you get to the, when you get to the end of that dirt road, you turn down a dirt road somewhere, right? Okay, I, I know you remember this part. Okay, when you get there. What do you see around you? Just, just stuff. Just was it was grass it, and trees and just nothing? Was it like a was it like a forest? A, I don't know. It was just was a it dark. like a swamp? I couldn't tell you how thick or how far it went. I just was it a, a was it a farmland? Stopped and then I just got out and then I didn't know what to do. I knew wherever I was at was way too far to walk, most likely because I don't even know where the heck I am. Right. And it's just dark and I can't see anything out there. I know there's shrubbery or trees. I don't know how far that goes. I don't know could you what see, it even is. Could you see the main road from where you were at all? No, I don't. Okay. Even, it was so dark the other direction. How I long, don't even know. How long do you passed. think you were off the main road? I just... Okay. I just kind of... I just wanted... You, you said before that you, you changed your clothes in a little building. This, this where was that? in the building. It was... There's, there's some little... Thing near where I parked your car, I just, I just changed near her house. More clothes behind it. Near her house or near where you left, Trisha? Her house. I drove back and then I just. You changed after you drove back. Because I didn't know what else to do, and I just like, well, the bag has clothes. I can just put more clothes on, and I didn't okay. know what to do. I just. It, and Stephen, okay, there's there's the next thing that I need to understand. When you when you got to where Trisha were ended up. How, how did you, where did you put her? Okay. I laid her down. Okay. I, I took her out of the car and I just laid her down. <laughs> was she in water? No, she was on the ground. She was, was there the water place. anywhere nearby? I don't think so. I don't, I didn't hear water. I don't just. We well, you know how a lot of them have like the little ravines and canals and stuff that run along them. You didn't see anything like that? I didn't notice any of that. It's okay. just, I just remember it was really Did she... dark and I just took her out and she just looked peaceful and sweet. Like what I remember her, you know, the way I would like to remember her. I don't ever talk bad about her. I just yeah. don't, I'd feel, I'd, not like love, love, but I care about her. You, you had a life like, with this person. I, I lived, I was married 11 years to her. Yeah. Of course I still care. And you created her. a life and, with and this I, person. There's, there's, you're always going to have some peace together. I get that. I get that. No matter what else happens, the money and all that other stuff. Just didn't want and that's that's why looked, we need to... She just looked peaceful. We need she to do everything that we can to, just, to bring her home now. I know what happened I just, happened. I know, and that's done. It's in the past, and that's what I want. And I told you in the beginning, I want to talk about the future with you. I'm, we're done talking about the past. We know what happened in the past. We need to get beyond that. We we need to find her. We need to bring her home. I don't know. I honestly, honestly, after all this time, every day I sat home thinking, today I'm, they're going to come knocking on my door. There's no way they're not going to find her. I don't, I don't even know where I left her. Did you? I, I didn't even try to cover her up. I just, right. I just laid her down. So she I was wasn't... hoping beyond belief that she would be okay. I didn't. I just. Well, didn't, you, I mean, you. You knew she was peaceful. You knew she was at peace at that time. I, I mean, I know you were hoping. I, was just I know you were hoping, you know, but, but you knew. You knew that was not the case. And it's, it's, it's horrible, and it's unfortunate, but like you said, and that's, that's just what happened. And bad things happen. But, so you're telling me you did not cover her up at all? Did you? I didn't even know what to do with her. I just, okay. 
it's every, I thought like, okay, if I bring her back, but then it's like, why did you go anywhere in the first place? And then it's like, if I go to the hospital, and I don't know how to explain to them that I didn't do this to her. And it just all oh, just sounded so bad. And I just wanted to hold it in. I just wanted the, the whole thing to just stop and just go back. Okay. And I know I know this is tough, and this is something that you don't want to go back to, but I need you to try to think really hard about what it was like there, okay? Because we've got to do this. We've got to bring her home. And I need you to help us do that. I know. I know. And that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get you to help me. I'm trying to help you to remember what you can. How long did you, did you sit in the car once you got there? Yes, I just, I just that stopped for, and I thought, and then it just... Was, was that for a long time that you thought? No idea. I just, once I got down this dirt road, I kind of realized, like, I don't even know where the hell I am. I don't even know where this road is going. I just, I just kind of stopped after a bit, and I just stopped. And that's why I said it was dusty, because when I stopped, the dust caught up or whatever. And then mm-hmm. just, I just didn't know what to do. It, Okay. Try to try to try to think. I know you don't want to put yourself there, but put yourself there for a minute and think. Try to look around and tell me you've you've got to try to remember what it looked like there. I know it's dark. It's black, but you could tell. Could you could you see the stars? It was kind of a full moon, not mostly full moon that night. Did you see the moon? I don't remember looking for the moon. I never thought to look at it. I just so that's going to give you a little bit of light at that time. Did you see? Did you see farmland? Did you see animals? I couldn't see anything. I just, just there was shrubbery. There was, you know, there was foliage around, but I don't know what kind of foliage. I don't know how thick the foliage was. But it wasn't real tall. It wasn't like trees. Real tall trees. There were some. But it wasn't like what are they really pine trees? It wasn't like that. But it wasn't like they weren't like bushes. I don't, I don't even know what kind of trees there were. I just know it wasn't like, it wasn't a forest. Forest, it was just, I don't know. I don't even know how to describe it. it just, was just, the road, was the road straight or did it curve at all? Uh, it was straight. I'm pretty sure it was straight. It was just like a straight it, shot? It might have had a slight curve or, I don't know, just a slight, you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. it's not, I don't know, like a razor straight. It just, Do you remember passing any buildings? No. No? I couldn't see anything out there, and that's why I eventually just kind of stopped because I, I can't see anything. Like the headlights are on, I can't see anything. I don't know. There's just nothing out here. I, okay. I don't know where I'm going. There's, there's just nothing. That's so now you're now you need after after you um, take her out of the car, you need to get back to her place. Okay. I, just, you know, I needed to get back. I didn't even really know where I was going to go at that point. I just. I just so didn't try know to where the heck I was, and I just went back to the road. I just turned around and I went back the direction I came. Okay. And then I'm now think about that. Was that, that road. was that? So you just drove down that one dirty, that one dusty road. I just drove back. And then you hit the main road. And then I hit the main road, and I figured was I was that pretty, left. That was probably where you drove again. I just figured I would turn left because left made sense. Mm-hmm. And so I just drove, and even then, I don't know where it, none of that stuff out there made sense. I didn't see anything. It was just road. You know, it was just, just road, hard road. And then eventually, I knew where I was at because I was back at the main intersection. And like, this makes sense. I know where I am because I've, I've seen that main intersection. So from where she was, you turned left and went straight and just, eventually just came back to the bridge road like hard and road, federal so highway. Turned left because if it's a hard road, I figured maybe this is back the way I came. Mm-hmm. Left made sense. I just turned left and I drove. And none of it looked familiar. None of it, none of it, I didn't see any signs even. I just drove left because I don't know. Just, I figured left would be back. How long do you think you drove? I know you don't know exactly the time, but what was it? You, you can remember minutes. It's just a while. 10 minutes, 15 minutes, half an hour, an hour. You didn't have that much gas, so I don't think you drove an hour each way, did you? I don't think so. I don't know how long it was. But it was a lot. I just remember going left and then on a hard road, so I'll just follow it to see where it goes. When you came. I realize where I am, and I did. And so I was like, well, I'm back in town, and then I didn't know what to do, so I just to get back to her house. Do you remember going over the highway? I go over the highway. Does the bridge over it? 
at Bridge Road, there's the, uh, I'm pretty sure it's under, there are six under that bridge. <laughs> But yeah, that's, uh, that's just, do you remember? But that's, that's 95. Do you remember passing 95? I remember I went over a bridge. I don't remember under a bridge. There was an over, but I, I don't remember there being under. And I don't you remember going over, over a bridge, though? We were over, yes. Yeah, so I think there's a railroad bridge that you go over. I just drove. Slide in the night. It's only the whole night to stop. How far past that bridge that you went over, do you remember? Did you go a long ways past that? The whole night, but, like, but, but you drove for a while. Yeah, I mean, just, just try to remember as best you can. Did you, you drove for a while after you went over that bridge? Yeah, I don't know how far. It just felt far. I don't. The worst distance. Oh my gosh, it was a terrible day. Okay. Is there anything else you can remember about where you were at when when you left her? Anything else around? Any. Anything that you can remember to try to help us find her? I didn't see anything. I just turned around. And, yeah, the road wasn't super wide. So I did, you know, the, the three-point turn or whatever. But I didn't pay attention to anything when I was there. I just, I just wanted to get back. Wherever back was, I just wanted to get back. I wanted the night to just be over. I just wanted everything to just be done. I just, I don't know. It's, uh, okay. Um, I'm going to do my best, okay? But you know, you know that there's a lot of people that, that love Trisha too, okay? And I know you didn't. I would never come down. I know you didn't. Craziness like that. And I know you didn't want to. I know you didn't want to take her from them. I know that wasn't your intention. No, I would never do that. And my mother needs her mother. So, so the thing is that that that's a result of the last family, all her friends at the church. It was a whole community, okay? I'd like to give you the opportunity now to write an apology and try to get that off of yourself. I have no idea what I would say. The truth. The truth, because the truth is what? That you didn't mean for this to happen, but it did. And that you're, are you sorry? Are you sorry that it happened? Of course I am. Holy crap. I... I wish I could have found another way to de-escalate it, but it, she just it, she just wouldn't let it so, go. She just kept pushing that, just pushing the issue, pushing the issue about money. And, and I, I don't think I don't have any money anyway. Like, just wait till the first. I'll fix it. You know, just just I don't want. I don't know why it's such a big deal with you. I know. It's, I know. Didn't even make sense. And this is and this is gonna be a lot of weight. And this is, has been a lot of weight. I mean you carried a lot of this for so long now, for weeks. And that's more than anybody can really take. And I can tell you that getting this off your chest and writing an apology to these people saying you're sorry that it happened this way, you did not mean for it to happen this way. And although it didn't happen, that you're truly sorry, I think that's gonna help lift a lot of weight. Is that something that you'd like to do? I don't feel like I'm sorry. It means anything to anybody. You'd be surprised. You'd be surprised. People people want to know that. Of course I'm freaking sorry. I didn't. Yeah, I'll, I'll get you. I'm going to step out for now. I'll get you um, some paper, okay? And you can think about it if you want to do that real quick, okay? I'll be right back.
Stephen. Yes. Yeah. Like the volunteer, would you like to speak to him? Yes, please. Okay.